Good evening, everyone. Yes, for God's sakes, we're doing a review podcast on Avengers Endgame. At the time of this recording, the movie hasn't even been out for a week to the general public, and folks all weekend have been bombarding me. John, you doing a podcast on Endgame? You doing a podcast on Endgame? You doing a podcast? Of course. Of course I am. But this shit takes time. Gotta get the crew together. With that said, I brought back the guys from the Infinity War podcast. Ted from Brain Scratch, Gareth from Find the Computer Room, and Derek from Game Explain. Gentlemen, welcome back. I guess we should start with this. Did you go to the bathroom at all during your first viewing? No, because I'm not weak. <laughs> all right, I can hold it. <laughs> I, I did not go myself at a cost, $12, because <laughs> I did buy a soda, but I ended up not drinking from it at all because I really didn't want to get up and go. Mm-hmm. I I had my soda, and I didn't have to go, so I'm good. <laughs> um, I, uh, Ladder of steel. I had my soda. I had to go, but I was literally in the middle of the theater, so I thought if I if I get up and and get in the way of people going to it and coming back, uh, they'd murder me. So I just sat, wanting to piss myself <laughs> for three hours. Say, you peed With yourself. Anticipation. Well, I drank my soda. I mean, you got a cop right there. Let's I was like, I drank guys. my soda. I'm thirsty. I gotta pee. Two birds, one stone. Bob's your uncle. I, I keep watching the movie. <laughs> There's probably uh, tons of children inside the theater. You could probably blame it on them if you pissed yourself. <laughs> I also, I uh, speaking of children, I literally was uh, was uh, between two small children. During oh. the entire showing, one was like I think like maybe eight to ten, okay. and he was chatty during previews. But for the rest, you know, he was fine. The little girl to the left of me couldn't have been older than like three years old, oh. and she was babbling the entire time. <laughs> so that was fun. <laughs> Please shut up, three thousand. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> I understood that reference. Oh yeah, we should also say spoilers. Oh, okay. I mean the title of the the video itself. I mean these always are filled with spoilers, but yeah, it does bear repeating. We will be spoiling the hell out of this film. So if you haven't watched it yet, we I'm sure uh, we can all agree here heavily implore you go watch the film because this is the the culmination of ten plus years of Marvel films. So much popcorn eaten, so much soda drunk, and so much money spent <laughs> on, on, on this cinematic universe. And it's not uh, over yet. I guess we, we should. St- I, I, I technically isn't. It, it is this for is me. My end it is for me. Film. Yeah, <laughs> uh, that's more of an end thing we could talk about. But our from the get go, what do we overall think? Tell. I'll start with you. What, like, what did you uh, think of Endgame? I liked it a lot. Like, I mean, I don't think that anybody would go as so, so far to say as that it's a bad movie. We'll get into like I mean I'm sure we'll we'll have nitpicks and we'll. Get oh, I have notes. I have oh, notes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. And you're a great but, man for taking. Them. <laughs> and I mean, you know, we were people are talking about it's not technically the ending, but it functions as one. It, it functions should as be. an ending that to this to you know the past ten years or so. And in that case, you know, I think as an ending, it's really satisfying. And there aren't many properties that go on this long that have good endings and i feel like that should be appreciated to some extent like how many tv shows can you think of that end well i think that maybe infinity war is probably a better put together movie but it was still a satisfying watch to me i guess is the spoiler free way i could put it yeah i think that's the major bit is like obviously you can look at this movie and have issues and all that stuff but i think for the overall feeling of it it is an extremely satisfying film uh i you know i I was into it pretty much the entire way through and just couldn't wait to see what was happening next because it honestly kept swerving in a lot of ways i was not expecting because i went into this pretty blind and it wasn't reading interviews and uh just i i didn't know about a lot of the uh, ways that it was rumored that they were going to take. So a lot of this stuff was super surprising for me, and I just enjoyed it the entire way through. And, you know, there's fan service moments, but they are those. Mm, they are really good fan service moments. Uh, and oh, I'm all it's about some those. of the best in the franchise, yeah, I would say. It, it is extremely satisfying in that way, and it, it does functionally serve as an end. And, of course, there's going to be more. We already know about that. But for this saga, I did not expect it to wrap up as completely as it has like you could stop right here and we have a 22 movie series that is utterly you know pretty great overall 
It's great. Well, I mean, when you put it that way, it sounds terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> 22 movies. Just to get, the box set is going to be magnificent. It'll take <laughs> yeah. up a whole Billy bookcase, probably. It's going to be $500, yes, though, it you will. realize. It, it probably will. <laughs> mm-hmm. Need a reality stone just to sum up that amount of cash just to get to it. I know this is not the end, but this is my end for the cinematic universe as a whole. I, okay, I shouldn't say that because obviously the cinematic universe will continue. Well, I mean, we're we're saying that, but who here is really going to skip Spider-Man? I'm going to watch Far From Home because I really enjoyed Homecoming. And from what they tell me, this is essentially the epilogue of this uh, this mythos. And then after that, everything else after this is a completely new story arc that they're going to build up. Although we can get into the futility of that later <laughs> in this discussion. <laughs> uh, but uh, as far as an ending to something we've been building up to for over 10 years. Yeah, I don't, I, I, I have issues with the movie itself, but they are so minuscule to uh, majorly affect what I thought of the film in its entirety. And if you are a, a, even the smallest fan of the MCU, you owe it to yourself to watch this. That said, I hope you have watched a lot of the MCU to really make get to get the most out of this film because much like Infinity War, this movie assumes you watch the other films and it is not very beginner friendly <laughs> at all. <laughs> and you, you, you're just not going to get the same type of enjoyment as someone who's been dedicated to this series for over 10 years. Ant-Man did not win, save the day by crawling up Thanos' ass. <laughs> Can we 10. please not? <laughs> um, I mean, I love, I love the joke, but it's like, there was some people that were legitimately angry about this. And it was like, he crawled up his ass, and oh it's like God. an enlarged. So I was like, "What are you talking about?" Disney lost their fucking mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Disney got no balls. <laughs> I liked it to echo what. Something Ted said, I think, without a shadow of doubt, Infinity War is a much better movie than Endgame. Endgame, it's it's um, it's a movie that gets by if you're a fan. I think, you know, kind of like with Infinity War, if you go into it, I think with Infinity War, if you went into that one with no knowledge of the MCU, you could enjoy it. Because I think, as I said last time, I saw that with two people who had no knowledge of that. I think if you went into Endgame, with no knowledge of the MCU, I think most of what happens, most of the points that affected us would just gloss over other people. Because I think so, so many of the of the emotional highs only, only work if you've seen the other movies. They don't work self-contained to this movie. That is a valid point, but... At some point, this is also movie twenty what six. Oh no no no! Five? I get you. No no. I I I, yeah. I can I completely get you in that regard. I I'm just saying that Infinity War I think functions better as a movie. This is is kind of this functions more. This pays off more if you're a fan of of um, the MCU. I will say, I liked it. Although kind of like with Civil War, the more I thought about it, the more the plot <laughs> literally makes no sense. <laughs> Like, I, I wouldn't call it Dark Knight Rises bad. But look, seriously, so many of my points in my notes, and I so I sent I sent these three, like a, a, like a thing of my notes from a few days ago. It's yeah. now tripled oh, of how many <laughs> notes I have. Hey, I'm just like we, we got something to help carry the conversation. <laughs> exactly, so I have so many. Things, but you so. know, I but you know, I I generally liked it. It's um, it's probably the most I have been emotionally engaged with a movie ever. I TJ cried twice. During it, I saw it opening night. I think I saw. I think it was the second screening in in the theater I went. I've never been to a cinema more packed. I had to literally park half a mile down the road because of how busy it was. But um, you know, the the crowd occasionally when when I see when I've seen movies in America, you get the occasional clapping at the beginning or the end. There was multiple times during this where people were cheering and clapping, and I normally. I normally, as an Englishman, I'm like, you peasant scum, how dare you? <laughs> but every no class. time... No class. No class. But every time the audience cheered, I was like, fuck it, they've earned it. Hooray! Gareth, don't you dare tell me you're not going to be cheering during King of the, King of the Monsters. No, you know what? <laughs> the, o- the only time... You know what? There, there are two times in my life I've cheered beforehand. One was when I was an idiot child and when Yoda pulls out his lightsaber and attack of the clones. I, as a 12-year-old child, stood up in the cinema and applauded and no one else in the screen was doing anything. <laughs> okay, you know, and the Attack of the Clones <laughs> is a cinematic travesty, but that seems cool. I forgive you. <laughs> and, and, and the second one, Derek, was when Godzilla, for the first time, unleashes his, his atomic breath 
2014. <laughs> I fucking applauded that moment, and I can't <laughs> wait to see him fuck up Ghidorah next month. But we'll get to that <laughs> another time. But it, I generally speaking, I liked it. If I was if I was to make some kind of arbitrary l- r- ranking of the MCU, it probably wouldn't make my top five, and it would definitely be under Infinity War. I think in terms of its rotto. Rotten Tomato score. I, I I have not subscribed to the theory that that reviewers are being paid off or what have you or their Marvel shields for the MCU. However, I will say uh, the, the, the like this. I think Endgame. I think Endgame is is the one movie in the franchise where the the kind of love of the series may might have have made people's opinions a bit higher than if this. Say 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 if if Endgame was wasn't like the twenty second movie. So I say like this was like the sixth or seventh. I don't think people would be rating it as highly because again, I have I have a lot of problems with its story. Fair, I don't think it was ever the intention for them to produce a movie that would ever be good as a standalone. So this is for all intents and purposes the finale of the the, the Thanos mythos. Because of that, and I understand that it, it excels in that. And I don't I don't I don't like to look at it as anything else but because I don't think that's what Endgame was ever trying to be. That said, I'm I, I think a good movie should also stand on its own merits. But I knew going into Endgame, I knew what Endgame was going to be about from day one, and as such, I don't think it would be I don't want to say fair or right, but I, I don't I don't feel it necessary to judge it uh, as, as something that it clearly wasn't trying to be or wasn't worried about being. You know, you know, it's weird, though. So I, I listened to an interview the other day, yesterday, actually, with the um, writers of Endgame. Because, you know, originally when this was first announced, it was Infinity War Part 1 and 2. And they said that they changed, obviously, Endgame from being a part two to its own thing because they said they wanted the movie to stand on its own and be its own thing. Um, I actually think a lot of the issues in terms of like it, it not functioning as its own movie would have been alleviated if, if the movie just was called Infinity War Part 2. Because if you're walking into a Part 2, that kind of implies that it's not its own self-contained thing. At the same time, given how Infinity War ends, does it, did it need to? I don't feel like changing the title would have changed no. anything. But you know what, really. Johnny? I still stand by what I said last time. The MCU should have ended with Infinity War. That is, <laughs> that is a great fucking ending. That is an amazing that'd ending. That would be depressingly dark. Yeah, it that's, why it's so, that's why it works so well, man. Like, I mean, we kind of see the aftermath of what that ending would have been like yeah. in this movie. Yeah, you got, you got to have your Return of the Jedi after Empire. So, like, actually thinking about it, the beginning of the movie, because they spend so much time on what happened after Thanos snapped everything, the beginning of the movie is very slow and very depressing. Yes, it is. Which I I think works, but oh, at yeah, the same yeah. time, it is not. It's it's like I think a good hour before even the smallest fight scene. Well, no, no, which, Ted, Ted, not true. The first fight scene technically happens about ten minutes in. Yeah, <laughs> uh, what, <laughs> that much of a fight. But. Oh, oh yeah, because Iron Man's a bitch. Sorry. Well, uh, no, no, I love that because because well, we should. It, it starts with Iron Man in space and Iron Man and Nebula in in the Guardian ship, and like they're oh, yeah, playing the playing paper, the, paper, the, paper, the, football. paper football. Paper football. It's great. <laughs> yeah, they're they're losing. They're basically they're losing life support. So like Tony Stark, he he records one last message. For Pepper Potts, and he's like, you know, it's it's likely he'll be dead within the next twenty four hours, and then Captain Marvel rescues her, re- then brings him back, and then that's when they have their plan of, oh, you know, twenty two days ago the snap happened, bunch of fucking mystic energy, and now we've noticed it on that planet just over there. And Nebula goes, I know where that is. I could have said it earlier, but I didn't. J.K. And then they <laughs> well, she did had no reason to think that he would have gone there. They got my, my my first, and this ties into my first note I wrote about this movie. Thanos cosplays a Shrek. He is literally wearing <laughs> Shrek's jumper as, as he's farming. It's beautiful. Oh, my God. It, it's funny. I, I wasn't uh, – first thing, I kind of wasn't expecting them to go uh, – because I had a feeling um, they would pay homage to the, the Infinity uh, Gauntlet comic book where Thanos yeah. kind of just pretty much retires on a farmland. Even has his suit hung up as a scarecrow. I'm playing. Yes, who's he, yes. Who's he scaring away? <laughs> Himself. <laughs> Those damn kids. <laughs> oh, it's like, I got to pick, pick up the pumpkins. Ah, oh, but that scarecrow, it scares me. <laughs> I thought pretty much that's what they were going to end it with his storyline. But no, he, so the, he, he snaps again to destroy the gems so that nobody else. Could. I'm I honest, surprised they went there with that. I thought like he would, 
obviously he had his own goals and plans in mind, but I always thought he was selfish enough to like hold on to the gems in case something happens. I like that about his character. It, it added a, a level of dimension. He even says, I did it so I would not be tempted myself. Yeah. Which you don't, you, yeah. don't, you don't often get villains who are like, I've done what I set out to do. I don't want to be greedy. So I'm gonna. Well, just... it also he's got this like weird, messed up set of morals where he thinks he's doing the right thing, and so he also doesn't want anybody to undo what he just did, and that's the only way to make sure. It's like he's he's Thanos's psychology is really messed up, and it's one of the most interesting things about Infinity War. But since he already won, they don't really explore that very much in no in Endgame. Because at this point, the literally... heroes are so pissed off. That, yeah. like... <laughs> that Thor literally just murders him like, oh immediately. So. <laughs> he went for the head. And Captain, and Captain Marvel is like, what was I here for again? <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> can we talk about that for a second? I am shocked at how underutilized Captain Marvel is. Yeah. Himself. That that is literally my second note. After all the build-up, <laughs> Captain Marvel added nothing to the movie. You no. could uh, easily no, write... I would not say that that's the case, because at I the end, her scenes are great. They're, they're great, but from a story standpoint, she adds nothing to, to Endgame. Well, I mean, there's also how many characters in this movie? Like, she's the cavalry, is no, essentially, no, Ted, that's her story I get story that, purpose. but I'm saying after the build-up and after all of the interviews with, like, you know, Captain Marvel is the most powerful person in the MCU. She's going to, you know, they're going to use her against Thanos, and you could literally remove her. And, you know, it's very similar to Spider-Man in Civil War. After all the build-up, you could remove that character and the general plot. Yes, the movie would, would suffer somewhat from that lack of that character. But from a story standpoint, they, they add nothing to the, to the movie. It's a result of her being added at the last minute. Because she's only had one movie in this entire MCU. Dude, dude um, Kat, she actually, um, Brie Larson filmed everything for Infinity War, for Endgame. Before they even started rolling film on Captain Marvel, her oh. her, her, her oh. solo movie script wasn't even written yet when they oh recorded the God. scenes for Endgame. Wow, okay. yeah. which which explains that. a bit, which ex- probably explains what do we do with this character? I have no idea. Let's just have a punch stuff and then we'll sort that out t- t- next yeah. year. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> yeah, it, it kind of explains why she has no you know real emotional core there. She's just sort of helping out, uh, you know, universally. And and whatnot, and you know, I, I understand the problems with that, and you know, it, it does suck for fans of hers. But let's be honest, this movie is very much focused on the core seven Avengers. It is their movie, which I do appreciate to have that cyclical nature and see, wrap up all of their stories. So it's a very uh, depressing beginning. Things are uh, uh, heavily focused on the aftermath of the snap. From what it looked like, New York was. Uh, it looked mostly abandoned, which I thought was like, even if you remove half of New York, that's still like 3 billion people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this like, New York's really populated. Uh, but I, I I do like how a lot of time is spent focusing on the aftermath, and it's not something that's like 10 minutes later, it's like, okay, we're going to go reverse it. It's like, nope. <laughs> it's like, no, we're, we're mm. going we're gonna to hang on this. And it, it, it does great for uh, emotional storytelling, especially... Um, especially with the return of Ant-Man. Well, I just, I like how differently everybody reacted to to the snap, you know? Like, Iron Man retreats into his own world. Like, some characters try to better themselves from it, like uh, Hulk is one of them. You know, Thor just gets completely depressed. You know, Scar- uh, not Scarlet Witch. Uh, uh, I, I, Scarlet you want to say Scarlet Johansson, but I also, I yeah. do that too, Ted. Okay, <laughs> I'm glad I'm not the only one. I'm glad I'm not the only one that does that. Yeah, uh, Black Widow just has no idea what she's doing. You know, Captain America's just trying to help, but he doesn't have anything to do because, you know... Wait, he's go, he's going back dead. to his Winter Soldier thing and, uh, yeah, and so, Civil War thing, so... It's just, I like that everybody is handling it in a different in a different way, you know, and they... And it's clear that everybody has a reaction to some of this. Like, and some of them aren't what you would expect. Like, for example, a Rocket is much more mature about the whole thing then you would maybe think that he would be considering that he's Rocket fucking Raccoon. Out of character, you know? zero out of ten. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, my favorite thing of this, and I did not expect this from the movie at all, Nebula is like like a major character in this. I did not see oh, that. Oh, Nebula, they do Nebula great, which is, I think, really good because I think that Guardians of the Galaxy 2 is one of my top five Marvel movies, but I feel like Nebula's underdeveloped in that, and they do a great job with her. Oh, I, th- I think so. part of that is because I think, and Derek, you brought this up in the Infinity War uh, podcast, that Nebula, in terms of the original Infinity Gauntlet comic book, 
she is one of the most important players in that story. So I think what she what she does in the movie is nothing close to what she does in the um, in the book. A spoiler alert: she actually steals the gauntlet from Thanos, and the last issue is Thanos and everyone else trying to defeat Nebula. So a bit different Wait, than really? what they did. Yeah. yeah, a bit different from what they did in the book. Wow. But yeah, so you know, I, I like the fact that in that regard, you know, she was still she still has importance. In the story, which again makes sense because now that, now that Gamora's dead, she's the character with the closest tie to Thanos, being her his weird adopted daughter thing. But I also want to take this point to I, I feel glad that I can finally now share with the world that I was uh, Thor's buddy double. For <laughs> so. Thor, uh, I I love what they did oh, with Thor. I am on and off with this, but go on, Ted. Well, here's the thing, though, because I feel like it, it ties in very well with what you saw in Infinity War, because they have that scene with Rocket and Thor, where Rocket's like, Thor, are you sure you're okay? And he's like, yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. Definitely fine. You know, half of my people just got, you know, murdered, and my home got destroyed, and, you know, all of my friends and family are dead, but I'm fine. I'm fine, you know? So for him to completely, you know, basically just lose it and go into a like a kind of the dude. depressing <laughs> yeah you know. the big Lebowski yeah. Yeah. he, turned, he turns into a Fortnite yeah. playing yeah. big Lebowski <laughs> yeah but like he just he hits rock bottom and I think that that's a, a, a you know that's not something you would expect for him but it makes complete sense when I say I'm on and off that's I guess where I'm on with the dramatic overhaul of his design <laughs> Because holy shit, I was not expecting that. I mean, he's always kind of been the most eye candy for women, and yeah, gone. And he does not slim down throughout the rest of the film, which it kind of just it kind of takes some of the dramatic effect away. But we're in this final battle, and here's Thor in his suit, and it's clearly skin tight, <laughs> and it just kind of I mean, takes me out of it a little bit. I mean, it is a, they have a lot of really good gags with him. Though. Yeah, like. Chris Hemsworth is underrated for how good of a comic actor he really is. You guys know for a fact that Chris Evans was like, I'm fucking Captain America. People should be looking at me. I have America's ass now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God damn. We gotta, we, gotta, we gotta fucking make Hemsworth look fat, all right? I ain't doing this movie no more. Sir, I got America's ass. He's got America's gut. <laughs> <laughs> Asgard's gut, all right? Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> America's Asgard. But... Especially if you remember that, like the events of Thor Ragnarok and 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 Infinity War took place within the span of like a day, a week. <laughs> yeah, you you realize Thor's kind of you know it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, that he's he breaks down like that. Well, it's also so. funny because I was you know what's weird I was uh, I listened to Ian Flynn talk about this and he was like he broke it down where every single movie that Thor was in most of them feature Thor being like like uh, taken down like in the first one stripped of his powers he's you know humiliated has to rise back up again Thor the Dark World he's you know imprisoned his family's killed he's you know he's he's taken down a peg has to rise back up again Thor Ragnarok he's kind of <laughs> embarrassed he's taken down a peg he's gonna rise I was like I haven't realized they've done the exact same fucking character arc of Thor in four of these fucking MCU movies. <laughs> Only one of them was funny. <laughs> <laughs> hey, no, Thor 1, Thor 1 is a good movie. Nah, All right. nah, dude, I can't agree. I'm sorry, man. Thor 1's boring. Another! <laughs> yeah. Thor, 1, Thor 1 makes me... I have to watch that. I have to watch that tilted so the whole movie's straight. Otherwise, I can't watch that movie. <laughs> <laughs> Buy a so fucking many, tripod, so Kenneth Branagh. Jesus angles. Christ. <laughs> I, thought, I thought I was watching the Batman 60 show for a moment. Oh, God. <laughs> I, I, I was, I did have a little, again, fan service, but I like that Korg was back. One of my first biggest smiles of the film, I mean, besides looking at Thor, was seeing Korg and me come back. Because mm -hmm. I, I was sure, I was like, what, did they die <laughs> in Thanos' invasion? And during the snap? I'm kind of wondering that sort of shit. And I, uh, they were my favorite characters in Ragnarok, and to see them back, and of, course, and of course they're playing Fortnite. <laughs> He's like Thor. This this kid keeps calling me a dickhead. <laughs> That's so good. That's such a funny line. I miss me scissor hands though. If we want to get jump back into the plot, one of one of my first notes is. Ant Man getting out of the quantum realm was so lazy I wanted to shit myself. Well, how else was he supposed to do it? Like, maybe him doing something, not just a fucking cat. How, first one, how did that cat get in that van? When no, it, it, was, it was a rat. It was a rat. It was a rat. It's a rat. But it's like, yeah. I'm just like, it, that's such a fucking lazy way for him to get out of, of the. of the quantum realm. I assume that a lot of people were like, Ant Man was going to do something himself to get out of it. But also, it's this. This kind of retcons something from Ant Man and the Wasp because he says he was in that realm. 
for five years, but for him it was five hours. However, when when Janet Dine was in the quantum realm for 30 years, she wasn't just in there for 30 hours. She actually aged. So I'm like, which is it? Stop making up shit about time travel and then changing it towards as you go further down the line, MCU. And that's going to come back in this movie. <laughs> MCU is clearly doing its own little thing with time travel or the, the space and time continuum, whatever that sort of shit. So maybe like after five years, then six becomes 10 and 10 becomes 15. Who knows? Maybe that's what they're kind of banking on. Well, they also kind kind of establish that time's weird too, because that's when they're doing the, the tests on uh, Scott in the Avengers lab, you know, where they try it for a second and then he turns into a baby, which, you know, again, is also great. Like, I, again, like, I think I kind of have maybe weird taste in MCU movies where the Ant-Man duo are some of my favorites. I, there's nothing particularly, like, uh, outstanding about them if you look at them on their own, but the characters just jive with me personally. I don't know. I, li- yeah. I, I, I like that they're low stakes. The fact that it's not, like, the end of the world, it's just Ant-Man's trying to do this one thing to stop this one little, like, rich guy. I yeah. find that very refreshing other than there's a bunch of fucking aliens going to destroy the world. There's a bunch of fucking robots going to destroy the world. <laughs> there, there, there's a bunch of fucking insert third thing here going to destroy the world. It gets kind of tiresome after a while. I don't really follow Paul Rudd a whole bunch with uh, in his filmography besides uh, Halloween 6. <laughs> Curse of Michael Myers. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, I know. No, I'm, ki- I'm kidding. But, uh, so but ch- <laughs> it, it, I, I know him mostly for com- I know him mostly for comedy. But this one, if you were trying to convince me that he can really put on the dramatic chops, I believe you because he really does sell the emotion. And when he finally comes back and realizes that five years have passed and that people have died and he's at the gravesite looking at names, he's trying to see if his daughter uh, was part of that list. Oh, that was heart wrenching because I, I love his daughter in those movies. So seeing if his daughter is up there, that was that was rough. And then the fact that she did survive and aged up. And I think in the comics, she becomes her own superhero. So that they might be I setting think, that up. eventually. I think she too. might become the wasp. I don't really follow Ant-Man comics. Be lady. There you go. Be yeah. lady. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I love, it, it's a shame that we lose out on the, hit, the original actress for Cassie because she's utterly fantastic in both movies. She's been aged up and the new actress seems fine. She doesn't really get a lot to do, but it is a really good scene seeing him finally reunite with her. Uh, I love the five year time skip. I, well, I didn't expect it. Is another is another. I thing. didn't either. Like, I, but that's also I, I love it because it means that this is not something you can fix. It, like it ten minutes after. Uh, oh, okay. Well, we we can get to that. Uh, all right. Well, what's the what's the next in uh, your your notes here? Well, so these these are a little bit out of order, but in terms of the time frame, I think when as we said spoilers, I think it's not. Uh, I think everyone going into this, into this is going to expect. Everyone comes back at the end, but because there is a five-year time skip, so everyone who who like hard people who got lost, right? There's bound to be several several people who lost like spouses and children and shit and moved on. Now what? You've remarried. <laughs> you've, remar- you've remarried to someone who is actually a lot better than your wife used to be. Now your wife comes back. Nothing's passed for her. But you're like, shit. This one's better in every single fucking way. I'm gonna, get- I'm gonna get rid of this one. You know what I'm saying? Like something that I'm pretty sure they can explore in a Disney streaming service series. <laughs> I think that th- that I was I was thinking the same thing, Gareth. And I mean, granted, yes, that is a big deal. I think it is a little bit outside of the stakes for. Infinity War, not Infinity, I keep on mixing up the names. It's outside of the stakes for Endgame specifically, but if they don't address that in, you know, a future uh, Netflix or a future movie or a future Disney streaming or whatever, if they don't, then that's a, a huge storytelling misstep. Also, also for us, because the next movie is Spider-Man Far From Home, which they've said starts very soon after Endgame. So is there anyone else just having to find it a bit of a coincidence that literally all of Peter Parker's friends got snapped? Because they're all there. <laughs> yeah. They're all there in Far From Home. And because this takes place in, the, in this timeline, and you know, unless, unless Far From Home pu- pulls some, it happens before Infinity War bullshit. Like, there was, was it everyone won't. snapped? Been, I think it's been confirmed. I think it's been confirmed that the Far From Home is after. Right? Yeah, but yeah. It's, it's like, so it's, it's a bit of a quinky dink that this all of his friends just happened to be snapped. Like, I mean, Well, I think his, his best friend, I forget his name, but he Ned. definitely wasn't snapped. Ned, yeah, he definitely wasn't because of Peter's end scene 
in now, in in this. He should status. be out of school, uh, Ted. He, yeah, he got dude, snapped. He would be, well, if he if he if he wasn't snapped, everyone Peter Parker went to school with would be in college by now. Yeah, no one would well, still no, be in there. He was just looking at him like he was dead in though, school, though. The thing. That's the thing. Yeah, well, he went. Maybe he went to the school to see no, Ted. He is there. the same no, age. No, no. I he would go to his he home. He's age, on the yeah. field trip. He got snapped. Even though I know exactly where my best friend lives, I'm going to go to the school. He should still be at today, and hopefully, I'll find him there. Good lord, I can't get past security. Look, okay, if my best if my best friend was in a preschool, all right, and I knew that he was going to be there after I found out that he had suddenly not died, I don't care how awkward it would be. I'd break into that stupid preschool and deal with the jail time later. <laughs> sir, right? sir, stop trying to speak to that six year old. You're fourteen. Get out of this school, you freak. <laughs> But yeah, it, it, it's definitely one of those things when you start thinking about the ramifications, especially about Tony mandating like we can't undo undo the past five years whenever we do our time heist. We can't because I don't want to lose my daughter. Which yeah. selfish fair. prick. That, that's he kind of Tony's whole prick, MO. You know, like I hate Iron Man. I will say though, like again, spoilers, but the second it was revealed – he had a daughter. I'm like, this motherfucker's dying. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, was just the same thing. I was like, oh man, that's a death sentence. <laughs> there was no fucking was way like, this guy's going to live that? now. This guy's fucking dead. It's like, why I, did you do I that? I mean, to be fair, I think we all went into this knowing that either Cap or Iron Man was going to die. Here's the thing, though. Like, I figured they would have, if they were going to pull the trigger on it at any time, I thought it'd be an Infinity War. I think they knew that because oh, that's the entire point of the sequence against him and Thanos. He gets stabbed. I thought that was it. Mm. But they don't, mm. and I was like, "Oh, okay." Then I guess they're, I guess they're not going to kill him, which means, or I guess Captain America, you're up. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm fine with that because we got more time with these characters. I, I, massive cast, but we have our crew, crew of seven that we actually get to focus on this time, and I, I feel like it's. A little bit more satisfying to have him die in Endgame than to have Tony die to Thanos in. Well, Infinity also War. It, 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 it's it's the thing where they wouldn't they 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 would not have had Tony Stark die without at least having a scene again with Steve Rogers. Yeah. So yeah. kind of that's a that's an important yeah. Point. So like kind of in, in Infinity War, I was like that ain't gonna happen. One thing to kind of go off on that one thing, I am surprised that there was there was zero resolution to the Hulk Black Widow relationship. They was like they just don't even bring it up. I'm once. okay with that. I always thought that was forced. You, well, yeah, like Johnny. I mean, I mean, like no one liked it, but it was such a big part of Ultron, and it still played in slightly to Ragnarok, and I want to say Winter Soldier. That I was expecting just a, a small scene between the two of them. Um, and I actually, that actually, when we get when we get to the Soul Stone, because oh boy, I got some thoughts on that scene. <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> it, it it plays it plays into that because I was just like, again, no one really liked it, and it was clearly just done because Josh Whedon had no idea what the fuck to do with Black Widow in Age of Ultron. So it was like, oh, fucking, she likes the Hulk now for some reason. Okay, okay, bye. <laughs> but like, it it it, it, it just felt weird. That it was such a big fucking part. Of, of like phase two slash beginning of phase three that the fact that, that there's there's no just resolution to it or just like you know Black Widow punches him once and like fuck you I, I, mean, I don't like you anymore it's you not know, exactly like, unheard of for this because where's Natalie Portman <laughs> we just we broke up off screen I would have welcomed Nat if just when they first see F- Hulk she's like I know remember when we, when we broke up a year ago that was good I think <laughs> well I mean I, <laughs> that was good <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to agree and disagree with you in that I'm going to agree with you because it would have been a really easy thing to fix, I guess is what I'm going to say. Because not only had all of Infinity War shenanigans happened, but it had been five years since that the snap, you know, when, the, the, when you get into the meat of the movie. It would have been an offhand conversation like that or a small 30-second scene afterwards you know when they're like if it's been assumed that okay we've got more important things to do you know why don't we just we can't focus on this right now or or whatever you know they could have handled it a million different ways but it's not a big deal anymore would have been a one minute scene and after five years i think people would have been like okay i mean it's already a three-hour movie things get cut it might have been cut just before pacing sake because in your grand scheme it adds nothing Cut it. In that regard, I'm like, cut everything with fucking Hawkeye, because I don't give a okay, shit. Okay, 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 okay. I actually think they did Hawkeye all right in this. Like, the first scene, the first scene of the movie oh, is great. Hawkeye. great opening, great yes, opening to the yeah, movie. A fantastic way to open the film. I think that the him becoming the Punisher thing is a little, 
egregious. Um, because, actually, like, Ted, he, his name is Ronin from the comic books. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, actually, his full name is Ronin Punisher. <laughs> <laughs> Ronin is the bad guy from... No, no, Ron, no Ronan, the, the Japanese term oh. for, like, yeah. assassin or, or what yeah, have you. R-O-N-I-N. <laughs> Oh, oh, okay. uh, you know what? I'm surprised that they even went there. Okay, he's not named cool. that, but every every nerd's like, "Oh, look, it's Hawkeye as Ronan." Like, he, he's, if he's not named that in the movie, you can't fucking call him that. Yeah, doesn't count. Honestly, if they were going to go with obscure shit, I was expecting his daughter to be named Kate, so that Kate Bishop could be the new Hawkeye. That is actually the plot of the Hawkeye Disney Plus streaming show. It's gonna be oh. Hawkeye. It's gonna be him training. Kate, so I, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if his daughter is Kate, but yeah, that is the Hawkeye show. Will be about him training Kate oh, Bishop. I actually am interested in that now because uh, Kate Bishop is a fantastic character. So, okay. Um, but anyway, yeah. So, the the I think that Hawkeye. You know, I know that you have scenes with the Soul Stone. I think that the Hawkeye Black Widow relationship is actually one of the better fleshed out ones in the series. And so that yeah, had yeah. emotional weight, even though I know you have writing issues with it and I can't disagree. So we'll push that to when we actually get to it. But so like, I like parts of Hawkeye in this, but the him killing people because he's mad about his family being gone. Doesn't really make sense be, to me because the gang agrees that it's okay because, you know, widow and war machine are looking for him to like turn him in. And whatnot, and then they just kind of drop it and pretend it didn't happen, which is another thing, you know, because he's murdered like a good hundred plus dudes, and they just don't have him face the consequences for that ever. But it's okay because his family's back, you know. It's like, eh, 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 you know. And I'm I like Hawkeye in the MCU. I think more than anybody because I don't think anybody but me gives a crap about this character. <laughs> I don't know Hawkeye's upbringing in the comics because I never read a, a Hawkeye comic ever. In the context of the MCU, uh, just going by uh, the first Avengers film, one of the reasons why he's able to relate with uh, Black Widow is because they have similar bl upbringings filled with a lot of bloodshed. So I, it, it does, it, it makes sense for me that after losing everything that means everything to him, he would regress back to that. I don't know. It makes sense in that case. What doesn't make sense to me is why everybody just ignores it, you know. And then they they add it to the movie and don't have any payoff. But the thing it, is, is that War Machine does say that we need to bring him and him in, and Nat doesn't want to do that because she, you know, just. She knows how basically that he's regressed, and it's rough to do it. Yeah. So, and I think and, at this think, point, given given that the mission now is to find a way to reverse what Thanos did, I think in their minds there are bigger things at play here that matter more than killing some random Japanese mafia dude. Well, <laughs> I mean, no, I, well, I think it's I think it's more a case of Hawkeye. He's he's not just he's not he hasn't, he's not just killing and random people. He's targeting like drug groups and he's basically targeting the evil people and because his his reasoning is like like my family are dead but you survived fuck that mm. which on that like I, I kind of get that but it's just um this is just me personally because I, you know like like you guys were saying long movie the fact that we had the scene like that scene of of war machine saying he's doing all this stuff we gotta bring him in i personally didn't need like the five minute scene of him kidding yakuza i think i think that's literally the movie being like we need an action beat it's been so yeah. long we need some kind <laughs> yes. of action beat it's 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 just like from 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 a story from a story perspective nothing new is gained from that scene because we already know he's doing I mean, yes, visually, because the end game, aside from the last hour, very little, very little action in this movie. So yeah, I, I I assume that was a studio note of someone saying we need to have some fucking, somebody throw a punch at least in the first hour of the movie, please. And so it's just like, just from a pro perspective, I, I would have actually preferred like a Hulk Black Widow scene versus let's watch Hawkeye kill people for five minutes. I think maybe what might have worked is a Hawkeye v Black Widow fight scene. Maybe might have been better to like uh, Widow trying. We to technically to got that in Avengers. She just smack him on the head again. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I, I mean, but he's got a sword this time. So that he makes got it a sword. Got <laughs> I think the uh, other thing is that they, they can actually deal with. They, there's a lot of story potential with that eventual Hawkeye show because dealing with him killing a lot of people after he lost his family, and maybe that's why he wants to pass on into somebody good with his with his with Kate. 
I mean, again, there's storytelling potential with that. And I honestly do not mind his uh, arc in this. I mean, it's it's a little shaky in bits, but I think overall it's like, okay, he finally got a decent arc. (laughs) He finally got to do something. I didn't think he was – I thought he was okay in Ultron. He just doesn't do much. Mm -hmm. He he just doesn't have much to do. Exactly. Here he had something to do. How would you guys react to Hulk? (laughs) Oh, my goodness. I like – all right, so I, I like a few others were a little myth that Hulk was kind of a non-entity in Infinity War, justified for the most part. Given you know, I I wish he had a fight, a good fight though. Like they 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 write him out because he didn't get a fight at all in in, in Infinity War. Which okay, that well, yeah, makes he sense. Did. He got his ass well, he kicked opens, by Thanos. He opens the film yeah. by fighting Thanos and getting his fucking face kicked in. Yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> like the Hulk is supposed to be the Avengers trump card, I suppose, and I, I guess that. Uh, Captain Marvel fills that role in this case, but you know, I would have liked him to do something. Like, that was what I was expecting, that after, at at that final fight, after Ant-Man rescues, it's I think it's Hulk and Hawkeye, that Hulk would have done something. And I mean, granted, we know that he got injured uh, using the, the gauntlet, so he probably wouldn't have been able to, like, stand up to Thanos or whatnot, but having him at least fight some dudes or whatever would have been cool. You know, like, ultimately, we got more good Hulk stuff from the flashback scene from Avengers 1 than we did from... Oh, God, the half-hearted, like, smashing killed me. (laughs) Hulk (laughs) kicked the stairs. I I was not... I was not expecting them to incorporate Professor Hulk in the movie at all. I thought that was something strictly 90s that they just kind of forgot about, but they bring back Hulk in a way I did not expect them to, and... It was weird. <laughs> it I think was it works, really though. Weird. Yeah, I think it works, too. Like, I, I think it, it was one of my favorite characters in the film, is Professor, Professor Hulk. Yeah. It, because the, 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 the contrasting juxtaposition of having Bruce Banner speak through this hulking monstrosity, <laughs> and he's as harmless as a kitten, really. Did, yeah. did, 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 did Hulk, did he seem smaller? He probably did was, I because it is a merging between the two, so... Yeah. Mm. I think they, they've kind of done that as well, where he kind of appears more muscular as he gets madder. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, I, I mean, I, I liked it. I thought it was, it, was a, it was a fun gag. But like Ted, I was expecting him to do something as the Hulk. Because he's, he's very useful as Bruce Banner. But, it, like, it's, it's, it's almost... How many degrees does Hulk have? None. Exactly. How many does Banner have? But, Seven. like, you know, it's, it, it's, it's, almost a, it's almost a thing where you could have just kept him as Bruce Banner in the Hulk buster. And the, nothing changes. So I would I would have liked, like Ted said, he would not be able to handle the glove, Hulk. though. That's the big change. Plot wise, that's true. But I also think character wise, it's important for him to be Hulk because, again, you know, out of tragedies, sometimes people gain things. And for Hulk, I mean, or Banner, more likely, he gained the clarity to realize that the Hulk is not the enemy, and so he, you know, he can take advantage of that part of himself i guess if that makes sense which made which i think was a fitting end his character arc ends before the movie you know during that five-year time skip like we don't see it on screen but that's a fitting place for his character like for bruce banner's character to to end you know it's just like okay i've accepted the whole key and i he's a part of me we're the same person so that's visually represented by me being able to be the hulk as much as i want you know like so, I think you know. Granted, it didn't add any. It didn't add a lot to the plot, and I wish it would have added more to the fight scenes. But I think that's a good way for the character to, you know, end up. I would have liked some reference to uh, Betty Ross. It, it just feels <laughs> like she, she's such a yeah. big part of of the comic books. But you know, when when he gets you know when he gets the uh, the, the like the Iron Man Infinity Gauntlet and does the snap. I would have loved it if he was just instead of wishing everyone back to life, he's just like, I want a medium coke with no ice to snap. (laughs) (laughs) I agree, but I don't know how much the universal stuff lets them do that. And actually, now that I'm thinking about it, the only stuff that Marvel basically doesn't have any way to use is now Hulk stuff, pretty much. They only just have the Hulk. And not in his own. Movie I mean, because they own Fox. Yeah, now. I mean, they could do uh, maybe potentially do She Hulk stuff, except for Submariner. For some reason, Universal. They don't have Submariner. For some reason, huh. Universal still has the rights to Submariner. I know it's like they can do a. They can have Hulk in movies. 
it, he just can't be the central focus. So I would love it if they did a She-Hulk movie and Hulk was like the sidekicks. Where it, it is just a fucking Hulk movie, but Universal still don't get to release it because Disney are petty Well, She-Hulk's a better character than Hulk is anyway, so I'm... She-Hulk <laughs> has a character, so yes, I agree with you. <laughs> there we go. Oh, goodness. So what were you guys' reactions when you heard the words time heist? I, w- I Honestly, this is something I wish that was stretched a little longer across the movie. I love the heist. Like, the entire heist sequence of the film is the best part of the film for me. I would say, like, I, I love that final fight, too. But the heist is great stuff. I agree. I, I unlike Derek, I mean, that was that was a rumor for at least over a year. Because there, there, there were set images of... You know, like Tom Hiddleston um, as Loki and like um, Chris Evans in his Captain America, like Avengers one suit. So like the the you know, the theory of time travel has been like uh, the biggest one around. So I going into the movie, I, I fully expected it. Um, but like like Johnny, I would have like I would have liked it if they went to more iconic moments. It's it's really just the end of Avengers one and the beginning of Guardians of the Galaxy. There are no and a other... bit of Thor two. Yeah. Oh yeah, of course. I, forgot, I completely fucking forgot Thor two. Um, <laughs> like it's... I'm amazed the movie remembered it. Like of all yeah. the Thor movies to focus on, they went with Thor two. I that love the f- I I love the fact that Natalie Portman got a paycheck for just getting up from from a fucking couch and walking so, forward. What, what, do I, what do I do? Well, you show up for a bit, lie down, and then a rock, and then a raccoon's gonna jam something up your ass. That's the funny. <laughs> that's the funny thing. Her scenes in this movie were all just extra scenes from Thor two. She was never on set. She did a few oh, new really? lines, but she was never on set. <laughs> At least they picked the part of Thor two that was the most emotionally effective to focus on. Because, like, Thor 2, I don't think, is a terrible movie, but it's certainly, like, a bottom five It's the MCU. worst MCU. It's not a bad you know, movie, but I, I think I, Okay, worst. we can argue about Iron Man 2 v. Thor 2 uh, I'll watch Iron time. Man 2 before Thor 2. And uh, I say that. I, 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 I yeah. want my bird. Neither yeah. <laughs> one is good. I think we can both agree. Yeah. One so, it was nice to see Frigga to actually get to do something because that his that uh, Renee Russo got to do nothing in the two Marvel and then two Thor movies to see her. But her death scene, her death scene was one of the very few effective moments of Thor two, though. D- Derek, you know? I, I disagree. She kicks the fucking shit out of the back in Thor two. <laughs> True. Yeah, like, her scene, her scene fighting Malekith or whatever the heck his name is, is one of the best parts of that movie. You know, it's and not, then the, the hard, funeral yeah. scene immediately after, that's also good. And I think it's, I think that the whole, I was surprised at how good that part of the movie was, honestly. Well, in terms of Endgame, I think that that him talking to a mo- his mom, I think, was probably the only thing that makes him make sense for getting him out of his emotional stupor at that point. Oh, yeah, you know? absolutely. It's, he yeah. just needs a mom hug. He really is. <laughs> one of one of my notes is just it's very convenient that every time they go back in time, they just happen to fucking see the person who means the most to them emotionally. <laughs> <laughs> Which I get I get from a script I get I I completely understand from a script perspective you want that because if they all went back in time and they, they encountered nobody and nothing eventful happened, it'd make for a boring thing. But I know this is nitpicky cinema sins level of shut the fuck up but it's just like especially when when um my other note is especially it's it's when how very convenient after tony and Cap do a double inception they meet the most important person also my other note after that is why the fuck didn't they go to hank pym in 2012 for more magic time <laughs> there's a reason juice? for that okay i read this and there's a reason for that if they don't say hank it in pym the movie it doesn't yes, hank pym hates tony stark why the fuck can't Cap? why okay here's the thing right uh nobody th- knows where he is he's hiding out in the middle of like bumfuck nowhere secret ink pim lab shit didn't you watch ant-man gosh <laughs> no You're such a fake mcu fan garrett I didn't, God wa- damn I, did, I didn't watch fucking ant-man because i'm married you nerd shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> that is a good point plus again who cares about hank you know the, the, neither of these two characters care about hank pim and it's very convenient that both peggy carter and um it's oh, super convenient. Howard Stark. <laughs> and Howard Stark, you know, know each other. You know, that, that way, both these characters that are important to each other 
are together. It makes sense that they both be on that base since it's all S.H.I.E.L.D. related and whatnot. Heck, I was the most surprised that they got Jarvis from the, the Peggy Carter TV show in this movie. The one fucking Marvel TV show the MCU knows. <laughs> and it's only because the writers of this movie wrote for that TV show. I mean, It's the only one that's canon. To, to be fair, MCU. that's one of the best TV shows. I love Peggy Carter. I've never seen it, but I've heard nothing but good things. Uh-huh. Like, I, 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 I want to watch it, but I've heard, uh, but I haven't, I've heard and, nothing. And Jarvis good is fantastic in it, so. So, Not yeah. even a single daredevil. <laughs> <laughs> At the end, when fucking Doctor Strange pulls his Sonic the Hedgehog movie rings and everyone comes out of them, you think you could have had the Defenders. How would the Doc is there? Nobody. How would the Doc is literally there holding <laughs> yeah. a machine gun? He is. <laughs> He's holding a fucking machine. That means how the Doc got snapped, and that makes me sad. Go- going back to the, the, uh, just the setup for this dimensional heist. They go ahead and annex, and this is something I really appreciate the movie doing because I I I, I knew it from the get go when after ten minutes, then they go to Thanos and they chop his fucking head off and they say that he says that the the, the stones have been atomized and you're not getting them back at all, uh, which I thought first though okay by atomized he means he shrank them down to like atom size we gotta get Ant Man to shrink down <laughs> we, get the we, need, back. we need the atom from DC yeah, Comics need, to yeah, come over here uh, no but as soon as he said that the stones are short it's like we're doing time travel. Like, they, it has to be time travel. That's the only way they can do it. I was, no, I was nervous because time. I, <laughs> I, I hate time travel because it's so easy to fuck up. But Which they, they do go, several but times. They do. Uh, okay, uh, I, I understand, but I appreciate them trying to set up rules in the movie itself. So, uh, I love the, I love the fact that they say that. Does anybody here know how time travel works? That's not based off Back to the Future or Bill and Ted <laughs> <laughs> or Terminator. Hot tub time machine. <laughs> yeah, hot tub time machine. <laughs> yeah, that there's it. that three minutes. There's that three minute sequence where they just shit on how time travel works in other movies, and then they pretty much break all of those rules by the end of the movie. I'm like, that, that, that's my problem. If there wasn't a scene where they were like, that's not how time travel works, you're stupid, I'm smart, and then they do the fucking thing they call stupid, I'm like, you, to me, to me, that I, I wouldn't care as much. Like, my issues with when we get to, to old man Steve Rogers, I wouldn't have those issues if there wasn't a fucking three-minute scene saying, that's not going to happen. They try hard to... At least make try to avoid shit by saying, okay, yeah, we can't just because one of the lines is we literally just can't kill Thanos when he's a baby because that's just that will just create more problems. So the and they make a big thing is okay if we take the stones, we use them, and then we travel back in time again and put them right where they were, so they effectively never left. Then we won't be creating alternate timelines and creating issues because that's what the whole scene with Tilda Swinton and Hulk is in the 2012 scene, which is a great scene just on its own. Like, I, she was a character I wasn't expecting to see, but I, I enjoyed her performance in this And movie. she was great at visualizing the whole effect of it to the audience, like, even expanding upon the time travel It's rules. basically multiverse theory. Exactly. Dr. Strange, yeah, I've seen that movie. trying to prevent as many bad multiverses as possible is yeah. the thing, which I appreciate. It's not, it's not linear. If only the actual Marvel comics would try and do that, we'd be spared some really bad comics. <laughs> well, that's because... I mean, comic books are dumb, and I'm pretty sure that Marvel itself has had, like, four separate rule sets for time travel. Whatever's convenient. Yeah. Yeah. Well, exactly. So, but, ugh. I mean, back to the original Avengers, them going back in time and having all those encounters. Like, we had the Tilda Swinton one, but my yep. God, uh, seeing... Uh, Robert Downey Jr. and uh, you know, Chris Evans interact with their past selves was really good. I mean, we already talked a little bit about America's ass. I got a, <laughs> I got a bigger laugh out of, um, out of Hail Hydra. Dude, my, oh, dude, oh, my, that was so that. cool. My I screening applauded, that. and I joined in. And that was that was that yeah. is the best fucking use of of a callback to your own universe that was that was mm. so fucking smart yeah yeah it's also a, a, a way of just using something that was originally infamous in the comic book mm-hmm. scene when it originally appeared and using it effectively to sell a moment that mm. that's what i that's why yeah. i laughed at that's that that's at same it. here my yeah. only my only thing is and this is something i talked about with, with tj so when at the end of the movie when steve rogers goes to put back all of these things if he takes back the because that he takes the loki staff right in that moment yeah, yeah he takes Loki's staff. If, if he goes back to right before he took it every one of those uh, double agents at shield now think cap is hydra which means that the events of the winter soldier shouldn't take place the way they did and that's kind of a plot hole 
for the MCU. He fixes it off screen. Yeah, exactly. You <laughs> just got to imagine. Cap is perfect. He did it perfectly. That's all you got to yeah. know. <laughs> okay, if we're going to... All right, just to deal with that little thing right there. It is something that is kind of like bothers me uh, as uh, when you think... When it's, again, when you just, just stop and think about it, you don't even think about it in the moment. It's Captain America at the end of the movie that is sent to return all the stones back to where they were. How is he doing that? Like, um, Well, like, they mentioned... They do bring up the point that he has as much time as he needs in order to figure true, it out. True, but that also means travel. going back to Asgard to return the reality stone. Yeah. How does I he would, return how does he go how does he return the soul stone? He well he can just put it back. He gives it to I mean him talking to Red Skull again would be awkward. He'd be like, hey buddy, sorry for throwing you out of plane. Can you put this back to where the hell it's supposed to go? Okay, thanks. Bye. Well, it's, it's like, <laughs> it's like why don't you yeah, but the thing is like why don't because everyone's back and happy. Why don't they all just do another time house where they know what the fuck they're doing and be like well, it'd be great if like Steve Rogers just walks back in there and their room goes, Oh actually I'm not Hydra, my bad, I have to start back. And that's how he fixes it. That's how he fixes the timeline. He apologizes for saying that. <laughs> I mean I do like the little bit of a like note that he actually goes back in time with the hammer as well. Like Mjolnir. Oh yeah, yeah. so that he can put it back in Thor two times. Exactly. So that it's not like Oh, uh, I guess you can use the hammer to summon the Bifrost. Can we okay, since we brought it up, did your crowd scream when he got the yes. hammer? Oh, oh god yes. yeah. Okay. Yes. My theory I screamed. Exploded. Yeah. That's the best scene in the goddamn movie. And I, I, will, say, I will, I I will say. So I have a note about this, and I know I am, I am gonna get. I'm sure all the, all three of you are gonna say no, as 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 much of an awesome scene as that is. I, just the thing is, because as soon as I started putting my my first thought was it's gonna be Steve Rogers, but then I was part, part of me was thinking, I think it would have been more of a of a holy shit if it went to Tony. That's my problem with with that like. Only he who's worthy. Surely, like everyone in the MCU is worthy. Not really, because a lot of them. It's it's about a level of selflessness. I think is is the thing, and even then, it's only like super special people. Like at the end of the day, like Tony doesn't is still self absorbed and still very arrogant. Like of course, like and like, whole, and Thor thing. isn't. Thor's like well, the, Thor, Thor's the second most arrogant person on the team. Well, I mean, yes, that's true, but he also. Like, again, he gets humbled like every other movie. So, you know, like, there, <laughs> there's that. And he loses his, he loses the power to use Malonier. Be, me, 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 me. <laughs> Baloney. He loses the power to Baloney because he, in the first Thor, because he's not <laughs> And then he humbled, gains it in this movie. He doesn't fucking eat for five years. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I mean, it, it's the whatever. It's straight from the comics. It's a moment I wanted as soon as they hinted at it in Age of Ultron and I finally got my payoff. Yeah. That's all I can. And I about. love how I, I I love Thor as a media reaction. Yeah, I knew, I knew it, and I love them comparing like the hammer and the axe. That was good. Yes, too. when when Cap has the axe, and Thor was like, "No, give me the axe. I want the axe." <laughs> 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 that was such a good moment. It, it led to a, a really nice moment where it's it's like Cap against everyone else. Mm-hmm. That was a really nice shot. Which is another another one of my notes. It's about. Um, it's about Thanos. So the, the Thanos they kill at the, the Thanos that they fight at the end, technically, technically hasn't done the thing they're trying to kill him for. Unfair. No, but he. But at that point, he's already made his intentions clear. Where he's not even going to wipe out. You don't even go. You don't even have to. You bring up his past to to justify it. He clearly states that. Now that I know what happens, I'm not going to eliminate half the universe. I'm going to reset the entire mm. thing. He wants to make himself so that, a god at that point. Yeah, and so that nobody will ever know what happens here, and thus he, he, he produce a universe that's more grateful for See, what he's this, doing. See, this is why you don't whine about when things go badly for you, because someone's just going to be there to laugh for you and make it worse. If, but he says that before the big fight, and that's more than enough justification for like, okay, yeah. he needs to die. He's yeah. also like murdered millions of people. Too, uh, so. they deserve I mean, it. it's a good way to have. Uh, <laughs> oh God! It was also a good way to have us fight Thanos in his prime. <laughs> oh yeah, true. Because hmm. he's like he's got the sword and stuff, and him. <laughs> I know we're jumping around all over the movie because we skipped I love, a bunch of I stuff. I love how you say fight him in his prime when literally twenty two days before the start of Endgame he was in his prime again. Yeah. Like, it's, yeah. <laughs> te- technically, he's been out of his prime. He's been out of his prime slash dead for about four days in the context of. <laughs> <laughs> true, but it, it, the thing is, 
even after the end of uh, Infinity War, he had an axe in his chest. His uh, his hand was obviously screwed up from using the, doing the original snap. He was even if you fought him like that, he would not be as strong as he was. Spe- so speak that that plays into another thing, which I know for for dramaticness, for you know dramatic effect, they did not do this. But um, one of my other notes is after removing Vision from the roster, Thor got nerfed because if he has <laughs> fucking Stormbringer, he like I know that there's a nice bit of of Thor, Iron Man, and Captain America going to fight Thanos, and I know Thor is kind of a bit chunky now, but he has fucking Stormbringer, which which you know deflects the power of a full infinity gauntlet. Thor by himself with Stormbringer should be able to kill gemless Thanos in two seconds. Except he's fat, so <laughs> there you go. I mean, as, as a fat guy, Derek, fuck you. But, I mean, it's... <laughs> Who are you, what are you talking about? I mean, are, do, do fat ass guardians work off the same metabolism physiology as fat humans? Though I mean, that's probably what they're banking no, on. It's, to me, to me, it's like it's 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 the fucking weapon itself. The fact that he has the Stormbringer, he should just be able to swing that bastard and cut his head off again. Well, they also they also he has the full army with him too. Is the other thing like not at the start of the fight? They don't at the start of the fight. It's just the three of them versus him for like five minutes, and then the oh, army yeah. comes in. Well, I mean, again, Thor hasn't been to the gym in five years, so you know he doesn't need to. He has electricity. He has thunder and cheese whiz coursing through his veins. <laughs> <then>. <laughs> We're getting oh, like God. way out of order because we still have like three other time heists. Oh yeah, we gotta get back to uh, <laughs> the, the space stuff. Oh yeah, the space. Oh yeah, because I don't think we we haven't talked about the like I think we'll save the Soul Stone for last because I think that's the one that we're gonna argue the most about. Yes, mm. the the guardian. I was actually I I thought it was really smart how they handled Nebula in the and uh, War Machine in the. In the guardian, when they go back to the guardians one time, because it's just like okay, so now they get it's just like Nebula. There's two people on Nebula's password now, and they're like, "What the fuck?" Uh, We don't like account sharing. (laughs) (laughs) I thought that was a little weird, honestly. Just by just by makes sense though. I I don't know if they ever. I don't. I don't think it does. I don't think it. I think it's 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 something they introduced for this film. It's very convenient for say like because the Nebula of the future is in the same vicinity as the current Nebula. They share. A similar network in their mind. And well, they they kind of bring that up in Infinity War, though, where they have her, they have him like hacking into her brain. Okay, it's it'd be like if she's just naturally is connected to their Wi-Fi or whatever. You yeah, know? yeah. And she forgot to unsync her her but settings. But the before thing going is, again, time. it's it's like it's a double-edged sword because like that that that's not been established in the past. But there would be literally no reason or, or why they would establish that in the past. Exactly. There's thing. no it, way it just, to establish it. It it just like Johnny said, like a lot of things in this script, it just feels very convenient. That it, the fact that there are two nebulas there makes them go crazy you know Mm -hmm. yeah it's just a little odd it's just a a way to set up like thanos uh plans for uh the end of the movie uh again if if the if there was and then again how the hell do you set it up earlier (laughs) that's that that's the problem i thought it was relatively cool personally but you know like then again you also don't i also don't generally watch these movies for the plots i watch them for the characters which is, I think, a, a big difference because character action and not story beats is generally where Marvel movies tend to shine. There Again, we still have great little character moments there. I love how they are recreating Quill doing his whole thing at the beginning of Guardians and then they cut to oh, that was War great. Machine and them and it's just dancing around. Like, and he's just singing and you're like, wow. This and is then, way less cool when you look at it. Yeah, exactly. Like, oh and then War Machine just knocks him the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's because Star Lord is useless and sucks. So, you know. So I guess the like the only one left to talk about is the Soul Stone, which I know you're going to bitch about, Gareth, because... Yeah, I am. Like, I am. My only problem with the acquisition of the Soul Stone that it's literally almost seen from Sim Gamora's death. From yeah. Infinity War. Well, that's the point. Yeah. Though, and, I, I look, the and, and that's why it's like, I understand, like, you got two characters who have no idea how the Soul Stone works, how you're supposed to get it. Uh, okay, in the context of the movie, in its universe, that makes sense. Okay, that's fine. But it's like when you look past that, when you look as a, as a movie, it is almost one-to-one Gamora's death from Infinity well, War, and it feels a little cheap. 
well, well, especially would... the shot the shot of, of Black Widow on on the floor that is fucking literally how the same pose Gamora's body was in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, here's the thing. I would I would disagree that it's the it's the same scene cuz it's a it, they're similar deliberately, but yeah. they're not the same. They're different because Thanos, you know, like we're told that he has like it, this is hard for him to do or whatever, but he ends up just throwing her in without thinking about it because what he's going to do is so important, you know, that he's just, okay, I got to do it. Whereas the Hawkeye and Widow are fighting over who gets to commit suicide. <laughs> oh, I want to die. Oh, I want to die. And that's another good point. It's a good thing the Soul, Sto- Soul Stone counts suicide. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. that was not willing, willingly done by either well, it, of them. It, it's also because in the original version of, of Infinity War, Gamora had a bunch of explosive bow and arrows. She was throwing them at Thanos. And that's why it was more like a game when I took it out. My, so my, my big problem, and this, this is more of... And I, I know a lot of my problems with the movie tend to be more of a kind of meta script problem but it's just like for one one it's 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 extremely convenient that the two people who go to collect the soul stone which needs some kind of emotional weight behind it have the deepest connection in the mcu two i think again maybe some people will be like it doesn't matter because they're heroes but why the fuck would you send the two? Let's let's be real here. The two weakest Avengers to the fucking alien planet for that to me made like I send one of them. This is why, in in uh, to, to kind of tie back into a point I had earlier about um, no resolution with the Hulk and Black Widow. I would have liked that scene a bit more. I mean, yes, we we would have lost something with Hawkeye, but I would have liked it if it was Hulk and Black Widow because at that point you could have you could have you could have finally addressed. Their relationship. She could have still, she could have still um, uh, made her sacrifice. And then the scene when they're reflecting on her death, when Hulk is like, that's the first time we see Hulk like fucking show anger. You could bring that up again. And I know some people would say it wouldn't be as effective because their relationship isn't as as uh, tight knit as her and Haw- Hawkeye's with was. And I completely get that. But it's just it's like so many things. It's just very very fucking convenient. The fact that we were denied. The fact that we were denied the scene of Steve Rogers going to put back the Soul Stone, seeing fucking Red Skull. I will never forgive you, MC. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine the look on his fucking face when he goes to a different? I think he goes, "What the fuck?" Are you <laughs> I mean, it did seem to go through a portal. Oh, oh, my my, my thing, coming. though. Yeah. <laughs> my whole thing with I, I really like that idea, especially because it works narratively that it yep. has to be Nat. Because Hulk won't die from that. No. <laughs> <laughs> Hulk, Hulk, would just, Hulk, would, Hulk would just jump back up again. But also, it's, it's the fact that just if Captain America is, I think they imply, I forget, I think they imply he does the teams. Again, uh, why would you send the two humans with no powers to the alien world where you have no idea what's there? Well, send, in, send in Hulk with Black Widow because he, he's the muscle. That makes sense to me. It's, it just, I know, again, they have to advise the plot. Also, it would be funny if, say, if like, Ant Man and Rocket went to get the Soul Stone because they have no idea who the fuck they are. So like, one of you has, to, one of you has to die. Has to mean something. I have no idea who this fucking stuffed teddy bear is. If he dies, I don't give a shit. Until now, I thought you were a build a bear. Another great line. Uh, so like, I, the idea is is that they were sent back the time at least one of them vividly remembered the time that they were there. So like, that's why Hulk. Um, Hulk, Tony, and uh, Cap went back to Avengers 1, and that's why Thor went to Dark World, basically. I guess it's just that nobody knew anything about the Soul Stone, so they just had to, you know, like, wing it. I mean, I guess it would have made more sense for Rocket to go back, at least, because at least one of them should know about something about space. I I guess that's just something I hadn't thought about before. Mm. I guess I don't even know how much... They don't even really establish how much about the Soul Stone the Marvel people know because they have like that whole brainstorming session about how, uh, all the different stones and how much they know about them, you know, and they just don't even bring up the soul stone at all. During because that the, the only one, the only one who did was Gamora. She's fucking dead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I was, I will admit, like it was, I didn't think they'd go through with it when I was watching that scene the first time. I, I, I for whatever reason, I did not think either of them was going to die. I was almost half waiting for them to just take a hold of Red Skull and just chuck him off and see what, see if that worked. <laughs> 
<laughs> like I wasn't expecting them to kill. Uh, I'm almost called her Scarlet Witch again. God damn it! I like wasn't Widow. expecting them to kill Widow. I also wasn't expecting to be as emotionally attached to Widow dying as I ended up being because I mean she's never been my favorite and she's never really done anything super important and the only one where I'd say she has an above average performance is probably Winter Soldier I would say Ted but, you know what but, you know what that means that means you're a sexist and you hate all women oh <laughs> you found me out I, mean, I, don't, this, I don't make the rules Ted that's just how the internet works you sexist piece of shit okay so while we're bringing it up the girl power scene how many people do you think started angrily writing Twitter posts? <laughs> Seven thousand. Oh, quite so a few. The, it, well, Ted, think about it. People, 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 fucking wrote think tank pieces on the fact that Nick Fury was shown washing dishes in Captain Marvel. <laughs> you know, for Wait, a fact. Whoa, 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 whoa! Hold the phone. It emasculated what? him. It did. It, 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 yeah. it, it emasculated me. He ate you know. dinner. All right, he's just <laughs> being polite. Yeah, so, so polite. Ted. Ted, because of that thing, I, I, I will say I, I like I like that moment, but that again that that's a moment that just screamed there is no in universe story at that point why there's just females there. That is just a Marvel version of saying, I know people who have criticized us for not having many female characters. Here's all our female characters and watch how they say nothing. It's cheesy as hell, but I still enjoyed it. Yeah, I'm more looking at as like, okay, um I know people are gonna bitch about this in some way or another. I'm looking at Wait, Captain Marvel's part that she doesn't need anybody else. She's got my, this. My, like, like, my favorite thing here? was somebody on the FTCR Discord was like, why aren't they showing Mantis fight? I'm like, because she can't fucking do anything. <laughs> What's she going to do? Make everyone fall asleep at once? Like, what the fuck <laughs> is she going to do? Like, I mean, she theoretically is the only person on the team to really effectively. Her and Thor in Infinity War were the only people to do anything to Thanos, like, at all. So, you know, like, theoretically, mm. she's the strongest person on the in the movie, <laughs> you know? There you go. It's an odd scene. I, the thing is, with the rules set up, they set up, it's hard to make it much better. Uh, and unfortunately, Widow, the way they set it up, I can't imagine a sequence where they don't have Widow die. I, I didn't really have that much uh, of emotional connection to a Black Widow throughout the MCU. I don't know. I... I I just, in a lot of us, just felt that she was a really flat character. Though the character struggled with that throughout the MCU. So when you're telling me that this is this is it, this is how she permanently exits the universe, I'm like, I don't know. I, 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 I there's not, there's not a connection there. I don't feel anything. I guess that means the Black Widow movie is going to be a prequel. <laughs> it has to be. No, it's going to be just two hours of watching a course. Yeah. Right. <laughs> wow. Um, It'd still make more money. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> It'll um, still make more money than every DC movie ever released. Combined. Com- oh, combined. combined. <laughs> Jesus. Can we just, can we just I'm can sorry, we- Ryan. <laughs> I'm not. Can we just take a quick aside? This movie made a over a billion dollars yeah, in, a weekend. in a weekend. Yeah, in a Were we, weekend. I mean, let's just let's just say we could like cure world hunger, but fucking <laughs> no, we all went to see Avengers Endgame. Oh, on the so, we gotta find that Black Widow movie somehow. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so like it, it, you know. So I read this. It made one point two billion dollars. It made it it doubled the previous holder of the most sales in an open weekend, which was Avengers Infinity War. It, Avengers Infinity War had made 560 million. It fucking doubled. Yeah. yeah. In a week. I mean, it helped that AMC was having 24-hour showings. Yes. And, yeah. and, it's and, also, again, Infinity War was such a big deal, and with that, people had to see how it ended. Oh, with that yeah. ending, you, of course, everybody's like, we got to see what happens next. I was it. I was like, end it here, boys. End it here. It's the best ending you'll ever have. <laughs> oh, God. I feel really bad for Shazam, you idiot. Don't release that two weeks before Endgame comes oh, out. Goodness. They must have had no yeah. faith in that movie, which sucks because that was apparently like the good one. No, yeah, it, was it was a good was, one. Was, I really it enjoyed it. It was a great <laughs> film. It was a great film. And you released it, it right before fucking Endgame, you idiots. Ugh. Did we want to talk at all about um, Iron Man's bits in the 
uh, thing or Loki escaping with the... Does that inherently create... Because I know when Steve Rogers goes back, he's going to take the Tesseract back to the 70s. But the fact that Loki escapes in 2012 now, doesn't that doesn't that in itself create a plot hole that the, the movie itself can't fix? Watch the Loki show on Disney+. Plus. <laughs> <laughs> he fixes it off screen. That's the only, like... I mean, I, I get that that's cheap, but... They basically say Cap's got as much time as he needs to fix everything off screen. So. He just kills everyone who gets in his <laughs> way. <Yeah>. In the, <laughs> <box>. <laughs> the other Avengers aren't here to stop me. I'm going to murder everyone. Yeah. No more Hell, Mr. Mr. Nice Cap. Hell I, I, I do kind of love how Ant-Man just is a complete kiss-ass to, to Cap the entire time he's with him. Ant-Man's one of my favorite characters in the movie, and part of it is because of his optimistic attitude, and that's because he didn't live five years of everybody being dead, Mm -hmm. you know, so it makes sense for him to be a bit more plucky, you know, and wait, no, you don't know what that word means, sorry, but it makes sense, (laughs) and like, not only is his his lines great, but he also, I think he adds a spark of energy to the movie that wouldn't have been there if, you know, if it was just the, because again, the main seven are the focus, but you know, they're depressed and beaten after the whole thing. When you so say main seven, who's, who's to... the seventh one? I'm sorry, Ted. When you say main seven, who's the seventh? Because there's only six core Avengers. Well, Derek <laughs> has been saying seven, so I've been copying him. So I've blame him. Count, but... You're supposed to be the MCU fan, you dork. Like, you should, you should know that. Well, Cap, Thor, Thor, Cap Thor, Iron, Iron Man, Man, Hulk. Hawkeye, Black Widow, and uh, I keep seeing oh. seven, so maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, I guess I guess technically in context of this movie, Ant Man kind of becomes the seventh Avenger, really speaking. But I mean, that's why that's that that's why in the credits those six get the big like that's gonna sign our name like Star Trek six because that's a movie worth parodying. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I will say one thing: I am very happy with, and this is a concern of mine. From Infinity War, I like I love the fact that everyone pre snap is still dead. Yes, mm-hmm. I yeah. love that. Vision is not brought back. Gamora is not really brought back. No. And Loki, well, that's going to be Guardians Three. Is them kind well, of trying to bring her it back? It shouldn't because at the end, I mean, I, I, unless we want to save that for further down the line, but I she should not still be there. Well, no, I, you know what? We'll see how they handle it. But I'm sure she will be, but she shouldn't be. <laughs> well, that's that's up to James Gunn to figure out how to do that. Fortunately, he has a lot of time. <laughs> well, I mean, I think it would make sense if they don't end up bringing her back. But I think them trying to find a way to bring her back makes sense for them to do in a movie. So, again, we'll see. We'll see. I, I think both Guardians are among the best MCU movies. So they've got, I trust, James Gunn. I have nothing but love for... Zoe's um, Zaldana. I love the character of Gamora. I think she was serviced better in, in Infinity War than she was in Guardians 2. But, I mean, not to, not to take Ted's status as the most sexist person in this in this <laughs> chat, but, do you know, they lost Gamora, but they gained Thor. Kind of a win. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and Nebula's part of the team, so there you go. Yeah, Nebula and Missy, they, they now have two females, but they used to have just one. That's progress. That's Maybe <laughs> maybe in Guardians 3, they really will break the Bechdel test. Doubtful, but maybe they will this time. Oh, well, God. no, they still know because Mantis was part of the team in uh, by the end of Guardians 2. So there were two women on the team. Then. Oh yeah, but they hate each other because Gamora just always threatened her with violence. No, she, she only hated Mantis because she was working for Ego. The the scene I will say that the scene when they immediately come back and they're like, Where's where's Widow? And then you see everyone's reaction, I thought was really was really well done. Like I really the again, like maybe this is me being like the one of the four people in the world who care about Hawkeye, but him being like it was supposed to be me, I thought hit a good emotional mo- note. I agree and with that. Jeremy Renner actually mm-hmm. had to act, which you know is a <laughs> which is which is a first for him oh, to be fair. I don't yeah. like this acting thing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I I honestly thought I mean, I know I know they pulled this before in Age of Ultron, but I I unlike with Ultron, I honestly thought he would succeed in killing himself. Which is, which is an odd which is an odd thing to root for but I was like yeah hey, Hawkeye you suck at life die <laughs> <laughs> I like Black Widow she stole a car in, in Winter Soldier Hawkeye's never stolen a car he just kills people <laughs> yay Black Widow <laughs> this, this is the criteria oh we have to be to justify yeah, living there we go. so who has to die which one of you have stolen a car before I have you win you get to live step forward <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I we got we got the the snap to bring me back we got the call and then 
I, I gotta say, it did feel devastating. Like it, it, it did suck the wind out of everything to have Thanos just launch all those missiles and just destroy. Oh, the I compound. thought somebody died right then and there. Oh yeah, like somebody because I think uh, I, uh, was it was it Hulk that got hit by the blast. No, I think it was Ant- it was, was either Ant Man or Hawkeye. I can't remember which one of the two. It was it was Hawkeye, I think, because no Hawkeye had the glove and he was running away from. Yes, uh, it was like it was like it was, it was like Hulk, War Machine, and Rocket were hit the worst because they were underground. And and not to say that I know that some people don't agree with the notion that death equals stakes, but that's a let they fuck up that building. It is somewhat unrealistic that everyone survives. <laughs> well, I'll most of them have that. superpowers, though. Yeah. To be fair. And they do show that, like, Hulk is hurt pretty badly because he has to hold up the entire building, which, again, is another cool callback to, like, a pretty famous comic cover with Hulk um, mm. as well, holding up the rubble and saving mm. everything. I find it a little weird, though, uh, given that the Infinity Gauntlet is made kind of a big deal in Infinity War, that it, it needed to be made from, yes. like, Asgardian a technology. Dying star. Yeah, a di- <laughs> it, it needs to be made with this certain Asgardian technology so it can harness the power of the stones to be able to survive the snap and Tony just makes a glove out of Iron Man technology and it's kind of the same uh, thing. He built a suit so, out of it, a bunch of scraps in a cave. Come on, man. You should learn this by now. <laughs> okay. All right, well, uh, when you put it man, that way, it's fine. <laughs> the man invented time travel. <laughs> so are you talking about the big one that Hulk uses or the The big one that one Hulk that uses. The big one that Hulk uses. Okay. Both of them, actually. They're both the same technology. Well, the yeah. one at the end gets freaking disintegrated because and Tony dies. So, you know, I'm not going to complain about that one. The one that Hulk uses, I guess the only kind like it does get very visibly like burnt up and yeah. shat upon afterwards which is some, and hulk does get hurt way more than thanos did after thanos did the snap because when thanos did the snap in infinity war he wasn't really injured that much well, the glove was, yeah, the wanna, glove was fucked but not his the arm the glove yeah. was damaged mm, yeah. I mean, he got fucked up when the accident to his chest but i want to say i want to say the, the notion of, of i want to say the, the notion of like the snap being dangerous I want to think that was invented for the for the movie. I don't. I don't believe. I don't think that's even brought up in the um, in the it original comic sense, book. It makes sense though if you're harnessing the power of all six at the same time. Yeah, yeah but you, but you, like yeah, but you, you would, you would think the notion of of the gauntlet should alleviate that. So yeah, I, I, I get for like you know the Iron Man ones he makes in like a day, but really you would think that the gauntlet should should not affect anything at all. It's just you know? a, a thing to harness the power of the stones. Like, well, yeah. Also, why doesn't why doesn't Thor just be like because they have the time heist thing? Why doesn't Thor just be like you guys do time heist? I'm gonna go fly and see and see uh, Tyrion Lannister. We're gonna make another Infinity Gauntlet. And then the, would, you wanna, would you want Would you want to take on the the star again? <laughs> he nearly he died it, the he, first time. He did it before. They he don't have enough pin particles. Gosh. All right. Jeez. <laughs> no, he takes the ship and flies there. There's no time travel involved in that. The system. <laughs> the he space got station snapped or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like after the okay, actually, they, that they probably would have been justified if they if they showed that. Like after the snap, Peter Dinklage disintegrated. <laughs> yeah, and don't watch they it, like game run of out of he just metal on screen? At, doesn't that star like not working after they finish the thing or something? I don't remember. No, because they after after Thor is burnt to a crisp in Infinity War. After the axe is made, they just jump immediately back to the Wakanda battle. So we don't okay. we we never see that uh, set piece again. You know what's weird though? Like a few things in Infinity, in people were uh, theorizing there was a shot in, in when once they get it of like another glove. So a, a lot, of, so a lot of people were thinking that would come into play. I will say one plot point I'm glad is not important. There were theories that you know that that one speck of blood that Iron Man like punches out of Thanos' face. So many people are like they're gonna fucking use that blood to like genetically enhance a new Thanos. I'm like, please don't fucking even say that. <laughs> just just, just yeah. shut the fuck. Why do you you fill my head with bad ideas? (laughs) Uh, So I've I've seen a lot of people compare, uh, say that the final battle in this movie is very similar to the one in Infinity War. Yes, because it, it is. I got, I got you. So I know that. Wait, like, in this terms one's of, at night, guys. The one in Infinity <laughs> Wars during the day. Is Fair different. enough. This got me way more hyped than the one the Wakanda agreed, battle. Agreed. Agreed. So yeah, uh, the feeling that I got, like, I mean, in terms of like the content, yes, it's pretty similar to the Infinity War final battle. But in terms of the feeling I got, it felt a lot like the final fight from the first Avengers, especially mm, yeah. when they were bringing in all of the cavalry or whatever. That's very clearly. Yeah. Supposed to be this mm. movie's version of the, Nick Fury, the, the rocket launcher. 
Well, well, I mean that, but also the 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 circle shot from the first Avengers. Yes. Because like, mm. that shot was supposed to be like, look at this universe that we've created, and in this one, it's just like, look at this universe we created. They literally have to bring in millions of people from Doctor Strange time holes. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and it's just like, and everybody when look I was at watching, all the money I made. <laughs> when I was at my theater, every time characters jumped in, people were cheering. Like people cheered when they saw mm. Spider Man. They yes. Cheered when it was they like, saw yeah, oh, when Spider Man showed up, big, uh, big ass. Cheer. Big, yes. Yeah. Here's the thing. When uh when Tony and uh Peter met and they hugged, you know, that's where I cried. And uh because you know last time we, we poked fun at the idea that we obviously know these characters are not gonna stay dead. Yes. It doesn't mean it's impossible to not still feel something when they do oh, yeah. return. It was it's a it's a testament to the the acting because Robert Downey Jr. like very clearly is just like like he's so relieved and has so many different emotions on his face yeah. when he sees Peter and not to mention that bringing Peter back was the reason why he thought to do it in the first place. Cause he's, you know, you have the scene with him looking at the picture of Peter when at his house. I was also very relieved at that moment. That was when I could no longer hold in my pee and I peed into my cup. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but I think the reason why for me, I think the, the battle for this one works better is when we saw Infinity War, it was three months after Black Panther. And it was, as we said last time, it was another giant battle in Wakanda. And it felt kind of samey to Black Panther. This one, it's visually, it's different. It, it's you know they're fighting the different fighting different creatures. It's literally fucking everyone in the MCU is involved, which is and it's nice to see Pepper Potts in her in her Iron Man suit again. That was cool. Uh, yeah. re- res- rescue, I think. Rescue, that's the name yes. Of the, is the character. That name is not said in the movies. Doesn't fucking count. I want to mention real quick about the hug. Is it is a nice callback to the Homecoming movie where Peter thought he was getting a hug from. Uh, Tony and you know he finally got that hug <laughs> that's why it's nice so it, it just again shows the growth between the two characters and what really makes that a nice moment um, and just I, I was so just invested in this battle in a way I haven't been in, in a movie in a long time uh, at least for like action scenes because I my, my leg was shaking the entire time like it was ner- like just bouncing up and down because I had so much pent up energy because I was just getting so into this fight. It was just sucking me right in. And I was just there for it every moment, you know, cap using the hammer. That was freaking amazing. The, the Avengers assemble line. Oh, they, they, fought, they I, I knew that they couldn't get through the, the, the mo- the MCU without saying it at once. Yeah. But they, I think they picked a good time to do it. The, so yeah. like a friend of mine who hadn't seen it when I was talking to him, he was like, do they say Avengers assemble? And I was like, you gotta watch the movie. Find out because I'm not gonna ruin that for you. Avengers, do the thing. Yeah, do the original, <laughs> original <laughs> script. Yeah! Avengers, fucking go. Original script line. <laughs> so based based on what we see with with uh, with Spider Man finally activating something on his suit, does Peter Parker now have one of the highest kill counts in the MCU? <laughs> <laughs> kill switch. Uh, I would say Thor. Thor still probably has it. I was not expecting a callback to the fucking kill suits. <laughs> the kill mode activates. Oh, was good. Good. So one of my favorite little moments was when Captain Marvel comes in. First off, like the 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 ships like trying to rain down fire on everybody below. But Captain Marvel's such a priority that they have all the ships fire at her. I instead, love that detail. Which is awesome. Mm-hmm. That was cool. awesome. That was cool. And then also like Thanos like punches her straight in the face and she's like, Yeah, what about No it? sells it. Love <laughs> yeah, that. No moment. That yeah. was so so good. It's a headbutt. That's what makes it better because his head, his head takes up the screen. Yeah. And when he, his head, when his head comes back, your face is like you ain't fucking nothing. <laughs> he has to use the power stone in order to do yes. any damage to her. Yeah. But again, it's it's it, it, it's like what we said at the start of this about you could again you could remove her from the final battle and nothing has changed, which is a shame. I was I was hoping I was expecting slash hoping she would do something plot relevant. I mean, you you could make the case. She brings Tony's ship back to Earth, but you could just have it in the script that they just fly home with no problem and the story is not affected. So it's, well, it's I mean, of, emotionally, kind of it wouldn't work nearly as well, especially considering how Tony stat- snaps. When 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 Tony arrives back on Earth, I cried, like just fucking like, him seeing Pepper Potts and the little moment of Cap where you think things are going to be good, and then a minute later he's like, "Fuck you, Captain America!" Like, you know, you know the bit, at the bit where he takes the he um he rips off his Iron Man thing 
and gives it this to Steve Rogers. Infinity War shows that's nanotechnology. Who else was expecting Iron Captain America at some point? Well, in this oh, the movie? Iron Patriot from Iron Man Three. <laughs> oh, yeah. like how how great would it have been at the end of the movie where, where Captain America has Thor's hammer? He pulls out Tony's little thing, puts it on his chest. He has the Iron Man suit and fucking <laughs> Thor's <Good> hammer. <laughs> like, this oh, fan fiction is getting out of hand. <laughs> the event the Avenger is now just one man. Captain America has all the powers of the MCU. All you have to do is just give him. Hawkeye's bow and arrow, and you're good. <laughs> and he'd still probably get his butt kicked by Captain Marvel. <laughs> probably, well, Captain Marvel, I don't, I don't read. I haven't read many Captain Marvel. We know you can't read it. Us. Yeah. I, I don't, don't, I don't know. If you want to take something out of context, right? <laughs> yeah. So, but I don't know how. So I don't know how strong she is in the comics, but in the movies, she seems to be like damn near Superman level strength, like practically unstoppable. So, I think, I mean, that's that's the thing going into this movie, which I, I know it's not said in context of of the movies, but I mean, if you watch Captain Marvel, she's clearly no one else has her level of power. I think no. Kevin Feige was like, she is without question the strongest character in the MCU. In the MCU, which again, on one hand, it's like you, I understand why you do. Captain and Marvel just coming in out of nowhere and just fixing everything would be lazy. Yeah. I, I get, yeah, I get I would, that. And that was my biggest fear of Endgame is that Captain Marvel literally does all the work. Which I, I, I knew going in, she wouldn't defeat. I think it, from a from a from a story perspective, it had to be either Iron Man or Captain America. I, I thought who would who would defeat, who would like do the final blow, what have you, on Thanos. If Captain Marvel did it, it would be like well, the, the last eleven years are fucking worthless because no one did anything. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, I think Marvel. him being Tony, I think makes the most sense and has the best emotional payoff because he's the start of this whole. Of this whole series. The fact that his last spoken line in the MCU is, I am Iron Man, is fucking genius. Mm -hmm. I I, I do like Pepper's last lines to him. It's like, don't worry, we're good. You can rest now. Yeah, because that's, uh, which I I feel is like a, 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 is, is perfect closure to Tony's biggest problem after the first Avengers, where he had the biggest case of PTSD. And for, for, from then on, it, like his biggest concern was, uh, as he would put it, putting a, sh- put, give, putting a suit of armor over the world. Which he brings that up at the start of the movie. He's like, what did I fucking say that? Did I fucking yeah. say that? No, do you listen to me? And then he, but he also mentions, oh, I don't care about your freedom. And it's like, yep, you're still a douchebag. <laughs> well, Ted, again, I'm like, uh, not to get on that, but worked, in, though, in, context the of the, in context of the MCU, if they would have just put a big sign that said, no Infinity Stones here, try Mars, <laughs> then the whole problem would have been put in. And I you think Thanos would fall for that? Yes, I do. Um, I think one, I, one thing I, I love is that I wish it had been a bit more... But I really appreciated the fact that the first person to go to Tony, to have a moment with Tony after he does his own snap is is Rhodey. Yeah, because, I like that a lot cause, too. Because it's, it's like really after the first, they don't – their friendship is like – you could make the case is probably almost as good as, as Black Widow and Hawkeye's was. They have been friends – the longest in context of, of this, and and they don't really get a lot of moments together to really show that. Most of the time, it's just War Machine fucking annoyed at Tony Stark for doing something <laughs> stupid. So it was. I I like the fact that it was, you know, they had a moment, and then at the funeral, it's like you know, at the st- at the front of it was obviously Pepper and, and the daughter, and then behind it was was Happy and Rhodey. Mm. And I like the fact that they really brought back the fact that they were friends. You know, they did. You know, I like that too. The one thing that I thought was a missed opportunity is that in the end, I loved the the funeral scene was heartbreaking. And yes, I loved it. I, but I, I, I ugly cried during that scene. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they freaking brought back the kid from Iron Man oh, 3. I didn't recognize who that boy yeah. was. I didn't first. either. I, somebody told me afterwards, like, oh my God. I was like, oh, really? How did, they, how did he find out? No, the scene would have been even the, the scene would have been better is that the very last person you see on the rooftop is Terrence Howard from Iron <laughs> <laughs> like, I told you I'd be back then. <laughs> so the the only thing is is that they have in that scene the last person that they show is like is Nick Fury, but like right before that is Captain Marvel and they don't have them talk at all. Which I mean I suppose makes sense now that inappropriate you told me time. That they, inappropriate time. <laughs> like I think that they should have had a character interaction, like mm-hmm. even just a bit, because like Well again, they didn't have a script at that point for for Captain Marvel. I thing. know, so that that makes sense, but then again I they maybe they should shoot their movies in order then, goddammit. <laughs> well no, I, I'm sure I'm sure I'm sure they fucking knew that Nick Fury was gonna be a big part of it. I, I almost think that 
they should have Nick Fury should have done something more. Which which not not to say that Nick Fury is is to blame, but like without Nick Fury, Tony Stark doesn't become doesn't do all this avenging crap. I kind of wish there was a, maybe a moment of. Of, of reflection on Nick Fury's behalf where he kind of he doesn't he doesn't feel personally responsible but there's just a moment where he's like you know I kind of caused this sorry everyone my bad <laughs> <laughs> but the moment the moment that fucking broke me and this is probably just because as because I'm a parent now anytime there's anything to do with like kids I get sad except for Pet Cemetery where I laugh when she died but <laughs> there's a moment in um, the moment where she's where she's sitting the, Tony's daughter is sitting with, with Happy and he's like do you want anything and, and she goes I want a cheeseburger which and he goes like your father loved cheeseburger reference to Iron Man 1 and so yeah. he gets back to America he wants a cheeseburger and when he just kind of holds her close and it's just like I'll get you all the cheeseburgers you'll ever want I'm like I fucking cry because I'm like man I want a cheeseburger as well <laughs> like an be a cheeseburger I'm hungry happy. now but like that th- like those moments man like that 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 just broke me in a way yeah. I did not expect Avengers Endgame to affect me. I'm gonna <laughs> swim I mean, there's a reason I love you. Three thousand is getting spread around quite a lot right yeah, right now because she's not that smart. If, if that's the highest number you can think of, she's not the kind of not really that smart. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, when I was her age, I thought there weren't any numbers above a hundred. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you don't read, so whatever. <laughs> But this could, yeah, but you can't count, Derek. So you know what? <laughs> I can count to a hundred. You can't count to seven. Really, right? all the character flaws in this podcast. <laughs> Before we talk about how it ruins the movie because time travel, I will say that the Iron Man stuff did get me, but the the cap scene at the end emotionally, I, I oh, loved. it was. I mean, okay, we'll talk about how it doesn't make sense in a moment, but just. I that's the ending he deserves. Him I finally think. getting a payoff. Yes. <laughs> Perfect fucking ending. Perfect. You know, again, I have I have two issues with it, but from you know what, Johnny, I I I feel a lot of ways about Endgame that I do about like the the season 5 finale of Steven Universe. Emotionally, it all hits all the right buttons, but you stop and just think of like certain character motivations like this doesn't really make sense this doesn't really work but just as, as an emotionally fucking perfection and Steve Rogers finally getting the ending he deserves with the woman he loves well the dance was the big thing for me because that's the whole thing in the first Captain America is it's just like I owe you a dance is the is the big thing and so to see them finally dance together was the big thing for me. It's just like, yes, finally, they, they got that moment. Which... I would have liked it if they went with the original idea where it took place in 1997 and uh, singing the dance and to smack my bitch up. But I guess it was just, just, I just mean, wasn't deemed romantic let, enough for some reason. Let's hope we didn't bring up the fact that he made out with her daughter in the future. It was her niece. Derek, Derek, oh, Derek, Derek, I, okay. Derek I, I have. Let me get. Let me get some of my notes about this. So Steve, Steve Rogers finally gets a happy ending. Things will get awkward when Peggy's niece is born, and Steve has knowledge of making out with her. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it makes it makes that whole subplot from Civil War really fucking pointless. Yeah. It was a dumb. S- s- also, subplot, also the fact that by yeah. going back in time and being with Peggy, Steve really fucks over Peggy's original husband. What a sack of shit! <laughs> <laughs> it is. It is stated in Winter Soldier that Peggy was married, and I don't for a fucking second think that while they were making um, uh, Winter Soldier, they planned they had planned this ending where it ends with Steve oh, no. going back in time. So Steve, Captain America, he saved that he broke this sub poor bastard now, <laughs> drinking himself to death because he didn't get to marry the love of his life. Steve Rogers, that that's why Tony Stark deserved yeah, Peggy, the hammer. So you want do you want Rogers. Peggy to settle for a second best guy? It, it, it's one of those where the uh, it, it, well, stop and think about those kind of things is like, oh, that's so sweet. Wait a minute. Wait a, Wait, minute. A minute. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. This is yeah, my I, house. Uh, Wait a minute. <laughs> I mean, before we even get to that, I do like that he passed the torch to Falcon. That oh was yeah, nice. that yes. was that was that was deserved. So now and Captain Falcon make- is now an MCU thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, it's it gets to, to, to bring up something that um, Ian Flynn said. I'd be like. Do I do I have to wear the costume because the Falcon armor gives me wings? Yours doesn't. So like, do I have to wear your costume as well? Or can I just keep the shield and like keep the wings? Because then I got the best of both worlds. You know what I'm saying? No, I gotta fucking what I gotta do. I I like the fact that Bucky was like. I mean, there, there's really no Bucky doesn't 
do much in this movie, and I'm kind of glad for that because I, I never, I never really cared. I think the fact that so much of the MCU is taken up with Bucky, I'm like, I would have, I, I, in hindsight, I would have been like, let's maybe wrap up his story earlier because he's not that interesting of a character. But I, I like that Bucky was like, even though I've known him for literally 70 years more than you have, you have your moment with old man Steve. I'll just stand. I, I think his, I think his arc wrapped up in Civil War. So yeah, I think yeah. Else you could do with him. Like, and I, I also, I also think that like he understands that. Uh, like he's done some terrible crap, and so Sam is more worthy of the title of Captain America than he is, really. Mm. You know, I I love the moment where Sa- where Sam sees his ring and he's like, "Can I tell you about the go?" And he's like, "You know what? Don't nope. think I will, because you know, because <laughs> you know why? That's that's what brings you back for Captain America Four. Don't reveal all your secrets, boys. They'll bring you back for more money. <laughs> <laughs> Just gotta be an old man makeup the entire time." Old man cap. <laughs> so, so this is something I didn't. Un- so, do you do you think it's implied? Did is is old man Steve Rogers? And we'll get to the fact that him being there makes no sense. But is 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 he meant to be still super serum? Yeah, Steve Rogers, or did he go back in time and not? Because he he looked f- he didn't. I mean, I know obviously he's he's aged. Yeah, but um, he didn't look very bulky. So I, I know some. I've read some people think he went back in time and just did not become super. Did not become. If he went back man. to the forties to live out the rest of his years with uh, with Peggy, that's still how many years? Like that's seventy, eighty plus years. But that's yeah. but he's got like he's got like the best steroids imaginable in yeah. his veins. Yeah, but even then, like, I still think he ages. I would love it if he just gets buffer as the order it gets. He's yeah. seventy <laughs> meters the size of a house. Yeah. I can't move. <laughs> Obviously, his longevity is enhanced because of the super soldier suit. But I still think he ages. Because mm-hmm. he was born in like what nineteen twenty. Yeah, something so, like that. So he'd be like ninety at the time. Yeah, and remember, movie. even with the five year gap, so it's like it's like twenty twenty four or twenty five, and he had close to like ninety something years old or some other shit. He looks good for his age. Yeah, <laughs> I think so. Oh yeah, I wasn't too weirded out by that. Again, I, hmm. I'm more thinking about how the movie. Within the within the context of the film itself, blatantly breaks its own rules. They literally they literally fucking say that what happens at the end of the movie will not happen. Derek, please please reveal what you shared with us before we recorded <laughs> yeah. that made well, me well, angry. Uh, let's it, let's give context to those who probably have never seen the movie. I probably don't give a shit. The movie goes out of its way to to explain it, it's time travel where you can't go back to the past to affect something in the future. That's not how time travel in this movie works in this universe. That's not how it works except when it does when steve <laughs> is tasked with uh, returning all the, the the infinity stones back to where they need to go and then immediately after he leaves he's on a bench uh, uh over yonder immediately and how does that happen if nothing from the past affects the future so the only yeah. thing that i can think of is is that he lived his life with peggy and then undid that too like that's the only thing that I can think of. Which... Yeah, and that's essentially what this uh, this interview with I think the directors, a, f- a fan of my, a fan of Game Explain sent this over to us as sort of like, hey, here's a talking point. Um, <clears throat> what do you what do you think about this? Or you know, this might solve a few issues. So they asked him, is it a parallel universe? Is uh, is it a parallel universe or is it a closed time loop? And they're saying they said, nope, it's not a time loop. Both Ancient One and Hulk were right. You can't change the future by simply going back to the past. But it's possible to create a different alternative future. It's not butterfly effect. Every decision you made in the past could potentially create a new timeline. For example, the old Cap at the end of the movie, he lived his married life in a different universe from the main one. He had to make another jump back to the main universe at the end to give the shield to Sam. So what they're saying is... (laughs) What they're saying is he got to live his life with Peggy. It's like, okay, she probably passed away. Time to go. Let's go back. Let's go back to my universe and Fuck you. pass one. Why life. wait until an old being an old man though? That's the thing. If he if he ever had the intention of just settling down with Peggy, why well, not? Well, he just probably get- wanted to live the rest of his life with Peggy, and Peggy doesn't die until Civil, Civil War. War time. Yeah, so which is like which is like seven old. years, which is like at least what. Seven, seven, eight seven or eight years beforehand. before the events. My, yeah. my thing is the problem of that one. You don't you don't say that in the movie. So fuck you. It, it, it's it's a plot hole. And two, the fact that if he sits it on that bench, 
I would have like I would love it if there was a shot of them just walking past the bench and he's on there because he he would have just sat there like I have to sit here while they're speaking I'm gonna yeah, wait for yeah. my time <laughs> I, mean, I, 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 have, I, have, I have to sit on Biden how long was he on that bench he like he forgot I forgot if they came at two or four fuck I better get there at two just in case just so I'm there when they get there see it would have worked better this explanation would work better if they had him pop up in the machine. Like he was supposed yes, to. Yes, but yes, But not as dramatically convenient. <laughs> you it's, know. it's not, but again, my problem is you can't go out of your way to spend three minutes shitting on Back to the Future. And then, you <laughs> and then do the exact and, same and shit and by the end. And then you end your movie with Back to the Future logic, you sacks of shit. I mean, I just want a scene of old Captain America being there ten minutes before the store is supposed to open and demanding <laughs> that they let him in. You know, it's just like, it's 8.50, you're supposed to open at 9, what the heck? <laughs> I was Captain America, you know. <laughs> and also, it's just a thing of um, so whatever universe. He, if if we do believe their theory that he goes to a different universe, but then if if he were to pop back in, uh, no. But it's just how the fuck do would they uh, would Peggy Carter have kept the fact that she's married to Captain America a secret? Captain America from the future, <laughs> a secret. You know, again, it's you know, it's very easy to nitpick, and I'm willing to forgive these. Like, yeah, it's an issue for the perfect what? ending for that character. But I, I don't really. Care. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Although, you know what? Based on what I just said, I, I've heard rumors. That I guess in Agent Carter, they make reference to Peggy Carter's husband, but never say who it is. And I know, I guess the writers have been suddenly saying that. It, you know, it's 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 Captain America, but then one that doesn't then 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 Agent Carter has to take place in an alternate universe based on what the Russo's just said. So mm. everything you're saying is complete and utter horseshit. This movie is terrible. I wasted three <laughs> hours and, 20, and eleven years of my life. And only, and then, you know, cheered, cried, wasted my time. Exactly. You know, I will say my 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 last my last note I have, and from the bottom of my heart. I mean this. At no point does Thanos get into a helicopter with his own logo on the side of it and fly away. <laughs> this movie, this whole series is fucking trash. I, I mean, I did appreciate the other callbacks. Like, it was it was really cool seeing um, uh, Rocket in his traditional comics outfit. That was cool. <laughs> Would it be also great in that scene if they put fucking Hawkeye in his, in his purple gimp outfit as well? I was like, yeah, it's comic <laughs> accurate. <laughs> So you guys gonna go back and see it again? I want I'm to, actually yeah. going tomorrow yes, with I my brother to. and my dad. Nice. Uh, you know, and just to see how well it holds up on a second viewing, I think because some movie Marvel movies get better and some get worse on second mo- viewing. You know, I I want to because I think, uh, if what I remember, I think I said uh, the same thing with Infinity War. The first time I watched it, I I really liked it, but I think I saw it twice before we did our podcast, and the second time because obviously I know I knew where the plot was going, I was able to kind of experience it more so I'm curious if a um, a second viewing would alleviate some of my issues or if it would just make, make me re- realize more plot holes and get angrier with the movie so we'll see what I'm interested to see though is I know that a lot of people are done with the MCU at this point but I'm really interested to see what they try to go with from here because we know I think no MCU movies aside from Spider-Man which is coming out like in a month and um, uh, oh, we're, we're aware of Black... some of the ones they have in production. We have an Eternals. Uh, oh, Eter- Eternals? Okay. Eternals, Eternals, Black yeah. Widow. Guardians 3. Guardians 3 and Spider-Man are the ones I think we know about as far as well, also, I mean, we, we, we fucking know for a fact there's going to be another Black Panther. There's going to be another Captain Marvel. Oh, yeah. there, there, there will most likely be three. Three Spider-Man, three Black Panthers, three Captain I think Marvels. we'll probably get another Doctor Strange, too. Oh, oh yeah, yes. Doctor Strange another too. Doctor Strange. I'm sure there'll be... There will probably be a, a another Avengers, probably called New Avengers, at some mm. point. I I know that going forward, Kevin Feige has said there are no more phases. It's just going to be like movies, which I think is kind of a smart way to go because you've been building up to these. To, the, the only the only way to continue like a phase would be hey we own you know you know fucking uh, Galactus I don't know Space Man. Well, that's He's actually what now. I was thinking is is that since they own Fox now. And, you know, God help us due to the capitalistic dystopia we're going to end in because of Disney owning everything. But with that said, they own Fantastic <laughs> I Four have now. a list here of things I would like to see in the future. For, for well, a second I there, I literally the, thought Ryan had joined us. That was uncanny. Like a, I mean, the thing is, is the only Marvel villain, I think, that could stand to be as much of a of a threat, of a the only character I can think of that could stand up to be you know, built up for 10 movies and be pay off 
for Big Will. The I agree, Ted. Big Will. I was <laughs> gonna say Doctor Doom, but okay. Yeah, Doc, Doctor Doom would be interesting. Doctor Doom, they cool, could do him well, which they never been able to do in live action. But here's it would the thing, nice. though: they never done Thanos up until the this series of movies. Doctor Doom has been two. So yeah, I but he's still also. Yeah, the, but if you get the, the comp, like Doctor Doom being able to just do anything he wants and the constant Doom bots, I think like, Doctor Doom could be properly built up. Like yeah, Doctor Doom's as strong as the Hulk, as smart as Iron Man, as good of a sorcerer as Doctor Strange, has an army, has a his own. Like I mean, I guess he's not a cosmic level threat. But does but he have a giant fucking wheel? No, Big Wheel is the only <laughs> answer that makes sense. <laughs> I mean, it can also do an Avengers versus X Men cro- like th- that. that oh, I, I, I hope they don't do that. Yeah, that is know. Avengers versus X Men might be. I, this is no hyperbole. The the worst comic book I've ever fucking read. <laughs> <laughs> Avengers versus X Men is so fucking not, bad. Not That's to mention book. that X Men make would not make much sense if they added them to the MCU at this point because mm-hmm. you know it's it was a big deal when all of these like when thor came down from the sky but how is that a big deal when you know kids just randomly sneeze and suddenly bees come out of their nose you know <laughs> like <laughs> that's the shit this x-men ever no. like i mean yeah but that's the kind of mutant power you'd probably get you know only dude, every you, <laughs> laser vision's you, been taken all right if you, you if you bees. could sneeze bees you would have to be called <laughs> snot snot stinger that is the <laughs> only acceptable name. But the, the, my, my no, no, you're Edge, the bee's sneeze. <laughs> uh, my problem, my problem with with X Men being in the MCU is that it's um, it's it's it doesn't make sense narratively for again people like the Hulk and you know Thor and all these fucked up weird people to be welcomed by society. But they're like this six year old could walk through walls. Let's fucking kill her. Well, I mean, that's a problem with the standard Marvel universe. Same. Anyway. Which, which like, I, 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 I've always had that issue, which is why if, if I'm sure Disney will bring back X Men at some point. Although I like that Kevin Feige said they're going to hold off X Men for a while because the X Men had a you know a very successful uh, movie franchise for longer than the MCU's been around. So you yeah, know, but I, the I, movies are also on very very hit and miss. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, I would I would I would, I would say it's about it's 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 like how Thanos wants the X Men cinematic universe. It's perfectly balanced with half of them are good, half of them are not good movies. So Thanos would agree with that. But it's just like, uh, honestly, it's, I think it goes more thir- uh, 25, 75, really because like, you know. But I would say I think I think the X Men movies that hit hit harder than most of the MC. I think Logan uh, is, be- is better Logan, than most of the MCU. Honestly, MCUs. the only ones that I think really hold up are, Lo- are Logan and, and X-Men First Class. Like the, the X-Men first 2. Two. I think X-Men 2 is great. Yeah, X-Men 2 I don't think aged very well at all, but you know. Like Did it that. age like Ultron? <laughs> <laughs> Age of Ultron I think it's too much shit. That movie is good. Like I mean, it's probably I would say the weakest of the four Avengers movies, but uh, I still e- think easily. it gets a little bit. Easily. Yeah, yeah but is. I still think it gets, like I mean I think it gets a little bit too much hate because I think there is a lot of good in that movie. The biggest sin, I think, is that that Vision ends up doing nothing across the whole MCU. Like, I think his he has the most action in what? Okay. Civil War? I mean, if we're gonna if we're gonna say men- crippling Hawkeye, I mean, a crippling War Machine is nothing to you, Ted. Then you and I have nothing to say <laughs> to each other. I mean, that's the thing. I don't know where they're going to go from here, and that's that's why I'm kind of curious what the tone's going to be for Far From Home. Well, again, in their words, I think, was that it's meant to be an epilogue of whatever has happened in, in Endgame. And I, I'm wondering, what do you – what does that mean? <laughs> it's, like, I don't, I, I don't, I, it's hard to It's hard to say. I mean, they could also be saying that just to get people to go to the theater since – Obviously, um, yeah. Since uh, uh, Into the Spider-Verse was freaking amazing and there's no way that Far From Home is going to be better. <laughs> I think what it really means is that Sony didn't want to wait six months to release their Spider-Man movie. I wanted it out. So it's really possible. That's what that really means. Apparently, Marvel didn't want them even announcing it until Endgame came out. Which yes, no, which, they weren't going to do that. But which which true. But I mean, like the, the fact that um, the fact that we knew before uh, Endgame came out all the issues with Guardians of the Galaxy three, which at that point in Endgame the only Guardian there was Rocket. So unless it was just the Rocket movie, we knew they were going to come back. And again, <laughs> as we said last time, if you if you're you know if you have the intelligence of an eight year old, you'd fucking realize they're not going to kill off Spider Man and Black Panther, especially after Black Panther's movie just made off billion dollars in, in the box office. So we knew these characters were coming back, but it does it does take slightly um, it it it's hard to get 
really invested when Sony, like, before Endgame comes out, Sony are like, fucking, there's Spider-Man 2, he fights Mysterio. Oh, that'll be fun, won't it, boys and girls? <laughs> <laughs> I, after Spider-Man, I'm marveled out. Like, I, I, I am not going to dedicate uh, my time and money on MCU for a long time because I don't want to. Like, this is this is it. Like, this is what I we were culminating to, and they delivered, and then some. And and how fitting is it that there's no post credit sequence? Yeah, <laughs> biggest groan of the audience: no post credit scene. Because a lot of people. <laughs> well, they trained us at this point. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think if they wanted it to be over, then that's the best way to show it is that, yeah, we have nothing else to show. This is it. Yeah, just so, have the three hammer strikes. <laughs> the best thing is in my screening, like, people, obviously, we, we've been trained. So we're sitting down and, and the credits are going on. They're showing all the, all the people. Somebody who walked out the cinema literally walked in and went, there's no end credits. You could all, like, there's nothing after the credits. Somebody did you that for when now. I went to see Man of Steel. Somebody actually did that, and everybody just went, oh, and got up. But that's actually one thing that I'm glad Marvel did. They got people to sit through the credits, because the people who worked on this movie, you know, deserve to get acknowledged for it. And that includes, like, oh, Joe, I, I who agree. built the set. Yeah. Mm. So, but, like, 90% of the people weren't watching the screen. They were looking at their phones and through the... I know, but it's the, the it's, the, it's the meat, and it, it's me, occasion. too. But it's <laughs> no, the, I would, I would, I would look it's at the it. Meat, it's the, the symb- symbolism of the thing, is that, yes, you're going to sit here and acknowledge that... Millions of people worked on this this movie. No, I did it, because I went I went to school with somebody who was uh, a stunt performer for a handful of Phase Two movies. So I would always look at that and go, oh, "There's my boy." Went to school with him. Yeah, I don't know about the first. I, like I know you're tapped out, John, Johnny. I'm. I want to say the same, but it's also one of those things. Like, well, if it looks good, I kind of want to see it. <laughs> plus, I have the whole AMC A plus thing, so I'm already paying twenty bucks a month. I got to use it somehow. Well, sure, I'll go see the. Like, I think it just, again, like, I mean, I'm a Marvel shill, so I'll probably go and see them all anyway, but it's just a matter of, I think that, you know, if the movies look like they're going to be good, then I think people will go and see them, you know? Like, I think people like the Guardians of the Galaxy, even if they're done with the Avengers, they probably will go see Guardians 3, you know? I think that maybe we'll start seeing people only go to movies that have their favorites more or something like that. But yeah, I, yeah, I won't say yeah. that I'm done. Like, I mean, it's, I want to see where they go next, but I also, I will appreciate a set of movies with lower stakes now too. Like we don't have to worry about keeping track of infinity stones or other bullshit. We can just be like, Oh look, there's Mysterio. His costume's stupid. You know? Whatever. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's, that, that's where I am. Like it's, I, I'm not, I'm not like, I'm not going to turn into like, I will never see a Marvel movie ever again. But it's just only if they appeal to me, and so far, uh, Far From Home just doesn't appeal to me <laughs> at all. Um, but Spider Man's in it. But I love ha- we already have the best Spider Man movie. Exactly. Fucking, we're not gonna, we're not gonna get. There, there'll be no point in Far From Home where Spider Man will be running down a corridor with somebody stolen a laptop on the monitor, and he'll go, "Good news, guys, we don't need the monitor." <laughs> that would happen in Far From Home. So, what is, the, what is bagel. the fucking point? It's got bagel. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Fuck it. You know when when Far From Home comes out, I'm gonna find a dollar theater that's still playing Spider Verse. I'll just go see that instead. <laughs> I'll see Far From Home. Spider Verse is a, a damn good movie. Yeah, well, I love that. movie. I saw it three times in theaters. Yeah, same mm-hmm. man. It is it is the best twice. fucking superhero movie made. It is better than you know what I'm gonna say. Spider Verse is better than any movie in the MCU. Agreed. I will stand by that to my it's, dime breath. It's certainly up there. You know what? I, they're they're so different that it's hard for me to compare. But it's like it's certainly as good as the very best of the MCU. Yeah, I'll definitely. Say I can that. see that. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's as good. A, it's as good or better than Thor: The Dark World. I agree. It's a brave statement to make there, Ted. I'm gonna watch <laughs> Spider Man: uh, Far From Home. Uh, after that, I if it's interesting, uh, I'll maybe give it a, a watch. But I, I, I'm just tapped out. They, I need, I need a few years after this is all said and done. Just... <laughs> I'm in so much debt, guys. <laughs> <laughs> no, but honestly, uh, th- this is just me wanting uh, the best from both worlds because I, I, as much as I enjoy uh, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, I'm still not what you would call a, a big Marvel fan. Like, I still don't read Marvel comics. Like, uh, well, nobody comics. reads comics anymore yeah. is the thing. Well, there's the like, thing. No, no, but here's the thing. Because I'm still an active, well, relatively active DC reader. I've always, I've been always DC, like, since my childhood. 
So I will catch up on those when I can. But I'm, I'm sort of like, okay, MCU is, is done. It was, it's been a fantastic ride. I'm satisfied with Endgame. But damn, I want a decent DC universe. <laughs> and I <laughs> we're feel getting, we're getting there. I feel the, I, I, feel, I feel I feel the biggest problem that DC has struggled with is that the pressure of making something as epic or as grand as the MCU has made them to make really fucking stupid decisions. We have some good prospects for DC movies. We have Wonder Woman two coming out. We have. Um, uh, Suicide, Suicide Squad 2 is di- being directed by James Gunn. Yeah, I want to see that. It's also a reboot, isn't it? Isn't it? Technically yeah, a yeah. Reboot? I think it's think a, so, technically yeah. a reboot. I hope it is. It's holy we fun. have the like Harley that. Quinn movie with a stupidly long lane that no one Yeah, exactly. Is. Who knows what that's going to be like. Uh, I'm not sure how I feel about the Joker movie. They're still going there. But if, they're, if they want to do like Elseworld Joker stuff, yeah. okay, sure. I have, yeah, go back to Elseworld stuff for a time. You know, it doesn't have to be part of a giant cinematic universe. I just want good DC films, for God's sake. Make Batman I mean, a vampire. Yeah, <laughs> no. Yeah, do that. Or how about a live-action all-star Superman? Oh, I would cry. That's, oh, God, that's, yeah. Ju- <laughs> Zach, Zach Snyder would, would fight with his dying breath to make sure that Superman is not that happy. <laughs> can, we, can we not? Can we actually not? Keep because- him away, yeah. Like, I mean, I'm not a DC fan, but it's good for nobody to have DC be as in the the sorry state that they're in. Like, I mean, I don't want to say that because I know Shazam, everybody loves that movie. But, like, it's not good for Marvel that Man of Steel and Batman versus Superman ended up being terrible. And nope. that's... No. Mm-hmm. No, but no, is, I would I would say since the fact that, that Aquaman made a billion dollars and was relatively well-received and the fact that Shazam was really well-received... D and DC is picking up, you know. I yeah. think if you, I think if you look at, if you look at like Man of Steel to uh, Justice League as like Phase One of DC Universe, I think um, box office wise, and it, it might actually have been more successful than Marvel. I think critically, uh, I mean, yes, like Batman v Superman and Suicide Squad um, stand out as badly reviewed, but Man of Steel got got. Decent ish reviews. It, it one, was one, mixed. No, People it, were it, fighting it, yeah, about that Ted, movie. Ted, from day Ted, one. Ted, it was mixed, but like, Hulk, but like, Incredible Hulk was mixed. Iron Man Two was mixed. The first Thor to a, the first Thor to an extent was. I mean, Man of Steel ended up making more money than most of most yeah. of. Mixed phase or not, one, which, it still made a lot yes, of cash. Yeah. Well, that's and, all. That's actually part of why I think Marvel succeeded where. DC failed is is that you people forget that Iron Man, Cap, Thor, those characters weren't popular until their movies no. came out. Uh, so, I, I would argue Captain America was pretty not popular. Really Marvel, not really. Relatively, maybe runs, because of the Civil but War, but it, it, until 2008, I, I, didn't, I didn't give a shit about Iron Man. Most of my familiarity with Marvel characters was like, hey, it's those characters from Marvel vs. Capcom. <laughs> you <laughs> yeah. know, because I, I love those series so much. Me, it was like, hey, it's that guy who was on the ninety Spider Man show for five minutes that one time. I know what I know. Guy it, is. it was on a complete whim that I wanted to go see Iron Man because uh, I was vaguely familiar with the character, and I, it just so happens that the first Iron movie was actually one of my favorite films of all time, and it's you know, and that that's that pretty much set me on the path uh, of the MCU. That said, though, I like. I, 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 I've always been on uh, a Team DC when it comes to like superheroes that I've followed since my childhood. And I would really want those characters to see. Like, I want a good Superman movie again. Like, I want a good Batman movie again, especially, you know, because the, the, the Dark Knight trilogy, that was, God, that was almost 10 years ago. Like, the last film was 2012. Dark Knight came out the same year as Iron Man. Yeah, I know. And Batman Begins was 2005, I think. Yeah, you know, I I think I think we're way overdue for a good Batman film again. Something different. It it doesn't have to be, you know, like the Batman. No one... I have I have hopes for that. Uh, what's happening with that movie though? Like I I heard it got canned. The DC DC Justice League sucked, and everything's in shambles. Is basically Matt, what happened. No, but like DC DC. No, you you can bank on Batman. So if that's too many, yeah, yeah. But Ben Affleck left, and Matt Reeves, who I'm. After those last two um, Planet of the Apes reboot movies, I'm fucking all for him being in charge of this. So I, I think that'll be good. Um, they've said they're gonna they're gonna make him more detective like, which they always say but never do. I, I've seen <laughs> I, I, I have seen Dark Knight more times than I can count. I still have no idea what the fuck he's doing when he starts shooting those brick walls. <laughs> I have no idea what the fuck that is. I'm just like he's, he's getting he, the he's prints shoot- on the bullet. 
but but how? Which, I, I don't I, understand. I don't what the he's fuck Batman. He's doing. He doesn't have to explain <laughs> shit. <laughs> I mean, you've seen the oh, big mouse detective. Oh, but they have to explain he's, the time travel in Endgame. Then, oh, don't they? Oh, okay. Yes, because Whatever. you know what, Ted, Ted, there isn't a scene in Dark Knight where he goes, "You know what, Master Bruce, shooting bullets into a brick would never work." He was trying to get a fingerprint. <laughs> Alfred, you're fired again. <laughs> I mean, there was time travel in the original Superman movie. <laughs> Which, which to this day, does, doesn't make a lick of no, sense. No, it doesn't. That's the weakest part of the film. <laughs> mm-hmm. If you're going to restore faith, like fully restore faith in, in making a decent DC cinematic universe, if you have to go that way, and instead of just making a bunch of Elseworlds tales or some other shit, you have to start with the major three. And they've already got that Well, no, that, I don't think that they do is the thing. I think that part of why the MCU worked is because they started with lesser-known characters, and so they could build up the stuff. No, no, but Ted, Ted, the only reason they did that was because that's who they had left. I guarantee you, if they had <laughs> Spider-Man and the X-Men, they would have been in phase one. Yeah, yeah but it wouldn't have worked wouldn't. out as well is the thing. So I don't the know, fact I that, don't know. Like, the... the I think that they had something to to build towards, you know, like the Spider-Man appearing in Civil War was really, really cool because that was a character we were waiting so long to see if it ended up being like someone stupid, like, I don't know, like Big Wheel. (laughs) I wholeheartedly agree with that, like no doubt. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to DC, people always think of those three first. Batman, oh, yeah. yeah, Superman, but they are the Wonder three of the they biggest the superhero names. You start in the with them. World. You make great Booster films. Booster Gold, Blue Beetle, and Vixen. Those are the three <laughs> yeah, we need. Exactly. <laughs> Finally, someone mentions Booster Gold. Uh, but um, <laughs> no, uh, you start. You make great films with them. Everything else just kind of plays out. Like and Honestly, yeah, yeah but that's the problem that they fall things. with is is that <laughs> they need to make great films. Whereas if you take a character that people don't know as much, you can settle on making an okay film and keep on working out the kinks with them like and Thor. then you get to the good characters. So. Like Thor. Yeah. Thor 1 is a good movie, god damn no, it. Really all right. <laughs> it's a good movie, all right? Like like Thor. Ted, you're Star-Lord, you're Star-Lord in Infinity Wars. Footloose of the Silk Greatest movie you're ever made. It never was. Is Thor still a pretty, pretty decent Marvel movie? It never was. <laughs> Well, we hope you guys uh, enjoyed our rambling for close to, oh, God, this is nearly three hours in itself. <laughs> uh, well, we'll see. Three hours 20. Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah, with all that, uh, with all the editing, it, it'll be two hours and 45 It'll minutes. be six minutes. Yeah, six you have 30 minutes, minutes of us rambling oh about Godzilla. Oh, my God. Godzilla that cut. Godzilla chain shit was so <laughs> long. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome to our end game. Fuck, Godzilla looks really good, guys. Come to Ohio. We'll put one more shit together. <laughs> It's just that for two hours. <laughs> I'd like Godzilla to get ice cream, please. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, as always, I want to thank I want to thank Ted, Gareth, and Derek for joining me tonight in discussing superhero movies <laughs> and people beat each other up for, for an hour. And uh, it, it was a great time. If you haven't seen the movie already, you owe yourself like big time. To go I never see saw it. it. No. I watched it legally on Reddit. <laughs> motherfuckers, I was not, did not agree to join this spoiler filled <laughs> podcast. I was honestly. <laughs> looking more forward to doing this than just watching the movie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anything uh, you guys want to plug before we uh, decide to call it a wrap? Should I start with you? Sure. Yeah, <laughs> watch my Twitch. Twitch.tv slash Action Shadow. Sometimes I play Dragon Quest Monsters and nobody shows up when I stream that, so it would make me feel better if you watched me stream Dragon Quest Monsters. Okay, thanks. Bye. <laughs> just just go to his chat and put haha, you can't read. He can't read the comments. It's fine. <laughs> know yeah, I know. If you're actually into the podcast, so next time test streams if you actually post that, then we'll know that you listened to it. Thank you. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, what about you, uh, Gareth? Yeah, that's the thing. Um, yeah, um, I don't know. We uh, got to find the computer room just today at the time of this recording. We just uploaded um, the start of our um, The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker HD, but recorded an SD LP, um, <laughs> which uh, we think is going to be really fun. We do the whole game in hero mode of only three uh, hearts, and it's about seven. It's over ten parts shorter than the Brain Scratch one was, so you guys fucking suck. Oh, wow. Um, oh, wow. wow, Ryan's really bad. <laughs> <laughs> we could have told you that before we did this, but yeah, it's um, that and um, look forward to our next um, thing that we're going to record after we stop now where we talk about the Sonic movie trailer for seven hours. Oh, God. <laughs> what about you, Derek? I don't have any me. Uh, yeah, just uh, Game Explain has, uh, you know, have all the analyses and discussions and E3s coming up and dear God, oh, God. <laughs> it's, it's going to be rough. But it means... 
But in the meantime, for more personal stuff, I'm still working through my um, uh, Castlevania streams. I am uh, down to... You're I think still the, not done? Jesus Christ. There's a lot of Castlevanias. Like, yeah. There's 33 games <laughs> I'm working through. I'm, I'm currently on Lament of Innocence. Uh, that'll probably be done soon. Then Dawn of Sorrow will pop, pick up after that. Um, so we're, we're making good progress, and it's still a lot of fun. And Smash Brothers it, was released like six months ago, man. You can stop that. No one will care. I, I, I care. I'm having fun. This is good stuff. <laughs> uh, it's, weird to me, it's weird to think, though, that I've, I'm pretty sure at this point I've played more Castlevania games than Johnny. Which yes, you have. I've always considered you the Castlevania easily, guy. Easily, so. easily, yes. So... Hey, catch up. <laughs> yeah. Get on my level. Play through the shit I have. <laughs> oh, I played through plenty of shit. You need to suffer through Castlevania the Adventure. Holy I shit. I'd rather just say Adventure Rebirth, which you can't play now because you took too long. <laughs> Thanks, Thanos. <laughs> yeah. Snapping yeah. it happened. We tried to spear. We lost, we lost Wee Wee, you sack of shit. <laughs> 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 uh, okay, but uh, as always, thanks again, uh, everybody, for uh, listening in to us ramble for close to three hours. Uh, sorry we didn't do a Captain Marvel uh, live uh, podcast. I can say that right now. It was okay. <laughs> I liked it. It was, it was fun. Okay. The beginning was, ru- yeah, was, beginning was eh. The rest it was of it was eh. good. The rest of it was okay. Uh, that's all I can it was really a good say. Movie. Yeah. <laughs> Go watch Shazam. Yeah. I think that's at the, at the end of the day, I think we can say... Go watch Shazam. 